Welcome everybody to Debate Deathmatch episode 7. Today we have with us Vegan, the guy scratching his nose in the upper left corner of the screen. And on the other side we have Kuro. Um, vegan will be, well, I mean, I, you pretty much guessed it. Vegan is going to be supporting the prompt, which is, is veganism a moral imperative? And vegan is going to be pro-vegan as intended. And Kuro is going to be anti the prompt, essentially. We have with us two judges, Bobby, Shalom Bobby, and Xela, who are going to be judging accordingly. Um, we don't have a third judge because I'm lazy as fuck and I don't organize shit properly. Apart from that, we're going to open the floor in a couple of seconds from now. And Vegan and Kuro will be able to give us their opening statements as long with who they are and maybe how they can be found and anything relative to that. And then we are going to enter the debate, at which point the chat and... um. Yeah, I myself am going to be interjecting every now and again, asking relative questions to the topic at hand. And the chat, motherfuckers over here, are going to be interjecting with direct questions as indicated above or trivia questions to fuck their shit up entirely. It, it will be brilliant. I hope you guys are ready. You're not ready for this one. So here we go. Take it away. Every time we address... Vegan is going to be going first as he is pro the position or the prompt that we labeled. Okay, so here we go. Take it away. Uh, vegan. That was a nice sound word. Uh, my name is Vegan. I'm a vegan. Uh, <laughs> I guess to start with the primary thing. So the obviously the prompt is, is veganism a moral imperative? I'm saying yes. And I'm going to keep things simple we'll stick with the vegan society's definition and if you guys want to keep it up to you know pick apart the minutiae of it uh their definition is veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food clothing or any other purpose and by extension promotes the development and use of animal free alternatives for the benefit of animals humans and the environment in dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. Um, I think for the discussion, we're talking about the moral aspect of it. Um, environmental wise, you can, I'll certainly be okay going into environmental aspects because some can extend, oh, well, if the environment's being harmed, people in the environment harmed. Uh, but overall, probably stick to the moral tenets of it um i think that's about as succinct as i could be for an intro <laughs> okay, okay wait wait uh yeah, go ahead. can anybody hear me am i am is my volume yeah. good yeah you're good okay. Shit, I'm, uh, I'm yeah i, uh, I was just you. muted yeah we can hear you no worries perfect perfect i am kuro you basically can't find me i'm just an online guy uh and yeah, I am going to be against the prompt, which is, is veganism a moral imperative? So you know, my opening is pretty, pretty short. Um, the goal or outcome of any vegan debate seems to be uh, to fork the meat eater into one of two positions, no pun intended. Uh, firstly, to make the meat eater contradict themselves by saying something like, it's okay to farm pigs, but it's not okay to farm dogs without being able to name a morally relevant difference between the dog and the pig. Secondly, if there's no contradiction, the goal or outcome seems to be to make the meat eater seem insane by biting a bullet such as, it's okay to farm some mentally disabled humans because some mentally disabled humans share the mental capacity of some animals so in addition to supporting my argument that veganism is not a moral imperative i'll be offering an uh, alternative that both avoids logical contradiction as well as avoids biting any bullets that the average person might view as insane in fact i think i'll be able to show there's a way to approach uh, animal product consumption that keeps our ethical considerations intact and that's my opening 
think <laughs> Both, I think that soundboard's a little uh Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wait, is I'm it, is it, it I'm liking the is soundboard. It, is it way too yeah. loud? Is it way too loud? Uh, you're just using it too much. No, it's that's like, okay. Right? That's my job. I'm the boss. Hey, I'm the boss. I make the rules around here. Right. Thank you very much, debaters. Thank you for your opening statements. Again, thank you to the judges who we have present today. It was a last minute notice. So thank you for turning up and for volunteering to debate for this, considering none of you are getting paid. I am a cheap motherfucker. So here we go. We're going to open the floor. W judges, W judges, correct. That is the correct stance to have. Mm -hmm. The only stance mm -hmm. to have. Right. We're going to open the floor again. Chat, you are non-existent as of this moment, but for anybody who is in chat, you can use your options above. You can either donate bits or channel points use your channel points to essentially ask the debaters any questions that you have or um, make them engage in a random ass trivia question that should stir the shit up out of the debate. Talking about trivia, we are going to head to the trivia and whoever responds accurately to the question asked, they will go first. So we're going to kick it off for Vegan. He will have the first opportunity to answer the question. And if he doesn't answer in time or doesn't answer correctly, then we'll give it over to Koro. So here we go. The question is, wait, here we go. Which kind of bulbs were once exchanged as a form of currency? Tulips. Uh, wait, that is correct. Holy shit. Holy Let's shit. go. Wow, Don DeMarco. Yeah. Okay, Sometime congratulations. Well. All right, so, Vegan, you are going to head off the debate, and we will commence as of this moment. So, go ahead. The floor is yours. Do whatever the fuck you want, guys. I'm going to kick back and enjoy the stream. So, go ahead. All right. Well, Kuro already, has already shown his knowledge. Uh, he's, he's already addressed the two main points. Obviously, there's a bunch of other minor points that can still fall within the two main realms um i guess with that in mind that his intro already addresses the 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 crux of the argument i don't really have an opening that would go beyond just asking him a question about what his answer is but that would kind of go against the nature of the discussion where i need to say i need to give the definition as to why uh, it would be an imperative and he just has to say why my opinion's wrong essentially so with what he said in mind, um, I would say um, I think veganism is a moral imperative because logically or emotionally, if we want to bring emotion into uh, a discussion of what could be right or wrong morally, people view or people, a rational person has a tendency to view um, certain living creature will we'll use animals uh animals with different levels of morals and they kind of tend to eschew anything that's not an animal or a lesser animal as not worth anything that is of any moral standing um i think if people were to apply their logic as to why they view humans or other animals that they deem important and they apply that logic to other animals and to dig deep as to why they feel the way they do, I think it would then lead them to be a vegan. Uh, he brought up, or Kuro brought up in his introduction of, okay, so why would some people say it's okay to eat pigs or farm pigs, like mass farm pigs and do whatever we want to them as long as we get pork or bacon. But in that same culture, speaking of North America, they would view dogs as this precious great creature that needs to be protected like man's best friend and people in america think that those in other countries that have dog festivals or cook and eat dogs are absolutely barbaric i think the logic of or their or rather the rationale of why dogs are precious should also be applied to pigs so we'll stick with Kuro's point about that and with that, I guess I'll see what Kuro has, or what he would say in regards to that. Okay, so I guess my first question, 
Or let me just make sure I understand what you're saying. So you're saying something like people view animals with varying levels of moral consideration, which is a difference uh, between uh, how they view something like an inanimate object, like a car or something like that. They seem to view things that are alive um, with either different or um, they have moral consideration to begin with for things that are alive versus objects which, which we seem to have no moral consideration for. Is that something like what you're saying? I guess another example, like, um, yeah, so people wouldn't morally view somebody, like if they own a car and somebody goes up and starts denting it, they're not going to have a moral consideration of like, oh, I care for my car because I understand it has its own experience of the world. Uh, they would be, they'd be angry about it because obviously a car isn't going to feel it, but they're, they're angry because there's damage that needs to be repaired and they need to pay for it. And somebody else did it to their property. Um, with a dog, if they have a dog, they're going to be angry in the same case that, hey, this dog is my pet, you know, it's part of my family. But also there's going to be an extra level of, okay, well, this, this is a creature that clearly felt that pain and uh, it was wrong to cause that pain to that animal. So would you say, so for example, if I kicked a dog and someone got angry at me for kicking the dog, are you saying that their anger is evidence that they that they're giving the dog moral consideration? I mean, if uh, if if it's sorry, if it's their dog, that doesn't necessarily denote that. But if it is a no, dog, no, let's say let's say it's my dog, my own dog. Oh, kick so you're kicking if you kick your own dog and somebody else speaks up saying, "Hey, that's wrong." Yes, uh, I think that would denote them appealing that they think that dog has more value yeah. outside of you know a, a money amount okay and so what so what emotion are we like if, if they were like disgusted or angry does it matter which emotion they're showing or yeah i guess yeah it would i guess it would matter like if if they're angry or disgusted or upset about it yeah, anyway they would, yeah, yeah. i i would think that would make them believe that they have a moral value of that dog and if they were happy or excited about it i don't necessarily think they would view a dog as having no moral value maybe i guess there could be multiple moral. ideas of it of either the the dog doesn't have moral value and they just get excitement out of activities like that for whatever reason um yeah, I don't know. I guess I haven't thought of that specifically. Like, if somebody is happy, how would they view a dog in a moral standpoint of being kicked? Well, we don't really have to go down the happy road. I'm just I'm sure. concerned. Yeah, with... if it's if it's if they're like upset or any negative emotion, I guess it's a as an umbrella. Yeah. Okay. So my automatic issue with that is going to be um, if someone is disgusted by something, uh, I don't think that necessarily denotes that there's some moral evaluation going on. So for example, if I told, if I detailed to someone how I worked uh, as a sewer cleaner, right? And the details of that explanation disgusted them. I don't think that means that they're giving that any type of moral consideration, rather they're just reacting emotionally to what they're being told. How can you differentiate between someone just being disgusted in a non-moral way versus someone being disgusted in a moral way? I'd have to, I think you'd have to bring up necessity of an action. Um, and I mean, and in this case, if you were to compare the two, uh, we need people to keep, you know, plumbing clean or keeping sewers clean and everything, because if we didn't do that, then you wouldn't really be able to have cities and there would be much disease running rampant everywhere. Uh, whereas if somebody's kicking a dog, they're not going to view it as like oh this guy has to kick this dog um, uh, excluding cases of you know self-defense or uh niche cases in that regard so you're saying the Shut difference up, is someone boy. needs to don't clean sewers it. but so we don't need to kick dogs that in for this specific uh comparison yeah i think that would be the most astute way of seeing it so i don't think that really i don't think that the knee part is really relevant to the question but i can just change the hypothetical to what if i were to kick a, a human-like robot that we know is not is not there's nothing going on in there it's just a robot right and i were to kick it and the robot convincingly fell over and looked like it was convincingly sad and someone got disgusted that i did that 
how can you tell the difference between someone giving an animal moral consideration because they're disgusted that I kicked it versus someone just reacting negatively to me kicking a robot that doesn't have anything going on inside of his mind? Before you answer that, Vegan, we're going to have a trivia question. So if you need to write that down, Kura will re um, reiterate it once we come back if needed, right? So here we go. This one is going to be taken over to Kuro. He will have the first opportunity to answer the question. Vegans, given that one of the two answers correctly, you will give them a point. If Kuro doesn't answer correctly or runs out of time, then the answer will go over to Vegan. And if he gets it wrong or runs out of time, then nobody will get a point. So here we go. Who was the first woman pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic? What the fuck? Uh, I know, I do have the answer. Uh, I'm going to go with Princess Peach, final answer. One second. Do you want to make sure again? Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. That is wrong. Incorrect. You lose. Let's take it over to Vegan. Amelia Earhart. What was that? Say that again. Amelia Earhart. Correct. There we go. There's a point for Vegan. Right. Take you it off. That Aaron, the name? What? Yep. He knew that. You never heard that name before? Yeah, I've heard that name before. Kuro. Never in my Bro. life. Seriously. All right. Never mind. Never in my life. Never, never in his life. Easy points never lost. In my life. Let's fucking I mean, go. It's a, it's years ago. Okay, Kuro, reiterate your final question. Oh, I, I, I do remember. Oh, you do um, remember. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So I think if I were to go into it, if we were to, I, I'm going to do a, a slight change of topic, but still on it. Um. When it comes to discussing the morals or the standpoint of what somebody holds as important to them, emotion is an aspect, and that I know that's what we're discussing. It's like, oh, I've, I'm emotionally disgusted by somebody doing this. Um, but what also needs to come into play, there's that triangle, I forgot what it's called, it's the ethos, pathos, logos triangle. And uh, I think pathos is emotion. Emotion is one of the three main appeals of what would cause somebody to change their opinion on something or do something. Uh, the other being logic, and the third one being, uh, I think it's, I'm going to believe it's really quick, just so I'm not a fool. Ethos to windows. Logos appeals to audience's reason. Um, ethos appeals to the speaker's status or authority, making the audience more like the trust. So, for example, I guess in ethos is the third one, where it's like, okay, would you rather trust a, like a, 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 an oncologist, a doctor studying cancer, or somewhere in a person you've never seen before when you have cancer and you want to get take care of. So bringing this back to the emotional appeal, like, okay, um, there's a, a totally super realistic human robot that actually doesn't feel anything and you kick it and it gives that emotional appeal of like, okay, well, this guy, or this robot, I should say, was essentially perfectly emulating a human. Like I'm disgusted because emotionally that's just terrible to me. But if they were then informed, hey, logically, that's actually just a robot. It it was just programmed to do that. Um, it doesn't actually feel anything. And there was nothing about it. Then that emotional appeal would still be important, but it would be reduced a bit. And the logical standpoint was, okay, well, logically, I don't agree with this at all. Like, I would logically, I wouldn't morally be against it in any way, shape, or form. Would be my response to that. Okay, so I mean, your answer, I feel like essentially kind of defeats your assertion that um, you can look at someone and look at their emotional response and you can tell there's I like, totally a, there's like that a, by accident. a moral consideration going on there because what you essentially did in your answer is ask the person, hey, like, is there a, is there a moral issue with me kicking the robot? And if the person responds, well, yes or no, then you've completely bypassed that emotional response that they gave and you're, you're simply asking them uh, about their moral considerations. Um, so that's, uh, that's one thing. I guess, I guess for the interest, I guess in the interest of time, or do you have a response to that actually, I should ask you. Oh, uh, sure. Um, I, I didn't, I wouldn't say I was skipping the emotional response at all. I said, 
the emotional response will be lessened in light of the logical answer being given. I didn't say, so from the first glance, you see the, the human robot kicked and then total pure emotion was played. And then if they were told after the fact, hey, actually it was just a robot, blah, 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 I didn't actually feel anything, yada, yada, yada. The emotional response is still there. It was just not as powerful. And then this logical aspect also comes into play into effect of somebody choosing what they would think is morally wrong or right. Well, it seems like what can happen here is a person can have an emotional response and behind that remote emotional response can either be, or uh, yeah, emotional response can either be a moral consideration or not a moral consideration. And in order to figure out which one it is, you have to actually ask the person if they're uh, yeah. looking at the situation with any kind of moral consideration which is why I'm saying it seems like the, sure, the emotional response is maybe an indication towards which uh, moral consideration they might have, or rather if they have a moral consideration for the thing that they're looking at. But the reason I say it's not important is because that emotional response can have either a moral consideration behind it or not. Ultimately what you're doing and why I say you're bypassing is because you're simply asking the person if they're viewing the situation with any moral consideration. I didn't quite understand. Yeah, so the reason I'm saying you're bypassing the emotional response is because behind the emotional response can either be moral consideration or no moral consideration. And in order to figure out if there's moral consideration happening from the person, you're just asking them. So you might see them disgusted and assume there's a negative, uh, assume there's a negative moral, con or assume there's any moral consideration. And then you ask them and they say, oh, actually, no, there's no, moral consideration here. I'm just kind of disgusted by it. Like it's kind of just a response, but I'm not really, you know, there's no moral consideration going on here. Or you might ask them and they say, oh yeah, there's a, there's great moral consideration going on here. I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted by how wrong I think this situation is. And in both scenarios, the, the, the way you're getting down to whether there's moral consideration is just asking them. It's not really about their emotional response. Oh, that, so that's why I was saying, um, I, I use the term rational person, uh, like if, if a rational person were to see somebody kicking a dog, uh, going back to the, the first thing of somebody kicking it, you kicking your own, you, you kicking your own dog, a rational person would view that and they would, or, or if they saw somebody in disgust, I guess I will add on this because I can't remember exactly what I said. All I remember was a rational person seeing that, um, or if they were acting in disgust, it would likely be that emotional response would be in line with the moral standpoint. If I said, we, I mean, we can go back in the stream after it's all over. If I said that absolutely, if somebody had an emotional reaction, that means that they have discussed, uh, that I was wrong about that for sure. I think my, my issue is that with that is just that people have negative emotional responses to all sorts of things that yeah. if you ask them, they would never say is like any kind of moral consideration. Yeah, but given the example, uh, kicking a dog, a rational person, at least in America, because I was trying to stay with American morals. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, a rational person uh, watching, like, the response of another person looking at a third person kicking their dog, and they saw that second person watching, at, reacting in disgust, rationally they would think, okay, they're probably morally against them. Given the context of being in America, where essentially all Americans would view that as true in their case. I'm sure you can have niche cases, but overall, probably relatively sure. true. Would you say that someone having a negative emotional response and having a, uh, a negative moral view on the situation that they're watching, would you say that this, um, give me one second. All right, sorry about that. Would you say that a person um, looking at a situation and having a negative emotional response necessarily means that there is a uh, negative moral consideration going on? 
back to, oh, I'm watching a guy deal with the sewage through a sewer. That's like gross. Yes. That doesn't, that's, that's not going to mean that they have a, a negative moral connotation to it. Yeah. Okay. So there's some things I want to get to. Sure. Okay. He said we could talk about health. I would like to go over health. Um, or did you say environment? You said either environment or health. I think health is not too important. I'm not like a dietitian by any means, but I've yeah. I know enough about the health aspects of it. Where again, going back to the majority of the population, it wouldn't really affect them negatively. But the environment, I think, would be a more moral standing because it comes into relation of how you affect others around you. Whereas you know somebody. If they wish to not to derail too much, we can go straight back. Um, yep. If somebody wants to eat whatever junk food they want, if they want to smoke their lungs away or whatever, if it's just affecting them, I don't think that's really a moral concern from that individual standpoint. Whereas if they were doing stuff that was affecting others around them or the environment in whatever regard, uh, I think that would have more ground to stand on as a moral discussion. But I'm I'm fine seeing where it goes, and you can bring up what you'd like, and we'll see what you know what happens. Sure, so typically for the, the health pillar, one second, uh, on. so, to... sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to uh, present a framework um, in which that is in relation to what you guys just talked about, and you guys might want to go into a little bit of detail about it for the next couple of minutes and then get back to this if you want or take the discussion from where you want after that. But I am going to present a scenario. If you need a hypothetical, I can present that as well. But we're essentially disputing how do we determine the sentience and capacity for suffering in animals? In other words, why should we care in the first place whether a do uh, the dog is getting kicked? Um, is there anything in relation to whether they can conceptualize what pain is to begin with? As a result, we can present a hypothetical, which is like, um, how do we determine if these animals are sentient and can suffer? That would be the question. One approach could be to observe. Uh, yeah, uh, you guys can address that head on if you want, if if you're interested. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can go first. Um, okay. uh, I guess if we were to address sentience, I mean, I guess I would... Thinking since it just came out of the blue, I probably have two responses. One being, um, the again going back to the rational person, what a rational person would view as sentience or suffering. Yeah. And if you're to bring the science into it, you have nociception, which you have specific nerve endings in your body that dict like denote pain that you're feeling. Yep. And we can see in majority of it, not all animals actually have it. And so, you know, animals we see have these things and they react in the same way like in a lab if we were to study the reaction of a shock to an animal versus a shock to a human like physiologically the best of our signs that we have uh which is what a rational person can go off of will denote that okay they clearly suffer in ways that are exceptionally similar to humans the other response being okay well we how do we know that a dog is suffering uh how do we know if a baby suffers yeah because if you if you don't know if they're suffering to begin with then why why would we even care so yeah i think I mean, that's if, the question was. If I were, yeah if i were to go so like a solipsist or whatever they're called um how do i know you're suffering i mean I, I know we can talk to each other but how do i know that you are suffering i can't i don't experience your life would be the the most extreme take which i guess you know can't really be answered because it's a solipsist take so I, you probably disregard that but I think that would be my main answer. The first thing I said. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is skipping a little bit further ahead and uh, what I have for my uh, notes. Um, but I mean, we can we, we, can, can, we can go back um, after after you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah, get actually, back would to that this. Be, would that be fine if we come back to this? That would be uh, totally fine. It was just like food for thought. If you guys are willing to engage well, with it, you can go ahead with culture. it. Otherwise, yeah. yeah, bring it up later as you will. I don't want to in interrupt the course of the debate yeah that was a nice little sneak peek uh, uh, that where we'll end up but um okay. so two things that i want to address because typically the as far as i've seen there are like three pillars um of veganism one would be the health pillar which seems to be the weakest one um the other one is the environment pillar uh which 
I think most people think is a strong one, but I also view it as pretty weak. And then there's the ethical pillar, which is the strongest pillar, but it's also the pillar I probably have um, one of the strongest arguments against. And so we can start at the weakest one, which is health. Um, and the contention here would be, I guess the, the thing you would say as a vegan is something like the vegan diet is superior to some kind of diet that contains meat, um, which um, if you were to say that, I would prove that wrong. But I'm wondering if you even believe that to begin with. Pros and cons, and to say one is necessarily better than another, uh, than yeah. another is, I. It depends on what you mean by better, because there are so many facets of. We're just talking I, healthy. Yeah, I'm, even even with like okay, so how then? I I don't. Um. I don't think overall there is a best diet. I think veganism has sure. pros and cons, and then eating an omnivorous diet has pros and cons, and then being a carnivore has pros and cons. Uh, I I could argue points on either side in regards to health, like why some is beneficial or versus not. Yeah. So would you be would you be okay with um, squirting this pillar off by saying? Uh, both vegan and non-vegan diets are uh, healthy depending on how you execute them yeah like uh because the american or sorry i should say a lot of dietetic associations yeah outside uh, across the world usually when they talk about specific diets they say well planned such and such diet is healthy yep. at all stages of life yada 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 um yeah. and I, I okay well I, I, as far as the health pillar goes in regards to the prompt um, I don't think it would be very convincing to use health as a reason to convince someone that uh, veganism is a moral imperative because you can yeah. find an equivalently healthy diet uh, that does contain uh, animal products. Yeah. So that would be that. And like I said, that's the weakest pillar. Um, yeah. The stronger pillar is the environmental pillar, which is which says that um, animal agriculture uh, contributes negatively to the environment, uh, and going vegan would significantly alleviate. The negative impact from uh, animal agriculture. Do you believe in that? Yeah. Yeah. So my response here would be, uh, if you're using this as an argument to support uh, veganism being a moral imperative, um, there's a way to obtain essentially the same reduction in impact um, to the environment um, by just re massively reducing your consumption or your, uh, your animal agriculture. Uh, and well, I can ask you first if you agree with that, and if you don't, we can. I can give you a hypothetical, and we can go from there. Your hypothetical would be like, okay, somebody eat uh, your standard American diet, and then they reduce it. Like, okay, I'm gonna eat one burger a year, which would be, a, you know, a well, it, it would be it would be in that direction, yes, but yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, going off of that, um, yes, uh, reducing animal consumption. To that extent would be exceptionally beneficial and and stopping that one last burger of the year uh would be a small portion of the entirety of what's going on yeah. um i would say negligible like that last whatever percentage of eradicating uh, animal agriculture would be negligible to the environment yeah, yeah um the same, yeah oh you, you can you can keep on yeah yeah, in the same way that if we were looking at someone's health in regards to smoking, um, technically smoking one cigarette is not yeah. healthy, but yep. someone's life can be healthy if only if they only smoked one cigarette in regards to cigarettes. Um, mm -hmm. It's the same kind of thing with the environment. If we reduce our uh, animal product consumption to such a degree that we basically eradicate all of the negatives associated with mass uh, uh animal product consumption or production rather, um, which is really the problem, then you would get the same results basically as if you just eradicated all of it. And you agree yeah. with that? Yeah. And so that's that's why we would delve into the moral standpoint to Yeah, because are you to why like okay, if you're just eating if you've cut your reduction or sorry, if you've cut your consumption of animal products yeah. down to one burger, uh yeah. then we'll go to that moral argument, okay. So then morally, why would we not just kick that last burger out and then go vegan at that point? At that point, Yeah. And so as far as the prompt goes, 
is veganism a moral imperative? Um, an argument that I don't think is very successful is saying that um, we need to go vegan for the environment because of the negative impact of animal agriculture. Um, when we can do the same thing by just reducing um, our animal product intake. And if you are a person who enjoys um, animal products, you can still enjoy them and get the same benefits as if you were to go vegan in regards to the environment. Um, so I'm not sure how that can actually support the prompt um, as far as your position goes. And so then naturally we go to the ethics, which is where we, you know, just got a little sneak peek. And you said a little bit, on, or do you want to reiterate what you said about the, um, the sentience? Uh, here, I'll try to remember. Um, the sentience being, is that somebody else talking? Sorry, it's my Alexa. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there, so there was the, we got the soundboard. Yeah, so I think at the very beginning, I was saying that health, I, I didn't care to really address it because I know it's, it's such a minute detail and I'm not a dietitian. Um, and the environmental thing, the the point is there. It's like, okay, well, if we cut down to one burger, uh, that it's it's far better than eating a bunch of burgers. And then you could instead view it as a, a trend. Okay, if we reduce by this much, it helps this. Like if we reduce twenty five percent, it helps this much. Reduce fifty percent, it helps this much. So blah blah blah. Um, th if we stick by that trend of like, okay, why don't we go down and just have one burger a year? The argument would would then be okay. Why don't we just kick that last burger and then we can eradicate fully. We don't have to have any animal agriculture farms in terms of efficiency of resource usage or land usage, um, because if we were to do the argument of you know each each step in reduction, uh, you could stop at any arbitrary point and say, well, this is better than the other than the previous step, but it's still not veganism. And if you're using that argument for every step, uh, why can't we continue that argument to say, okay, get rid of this last step, and then you're fully vegan, and the reduction is still impactful in some way, even if some would say it's negligible. It still does have an impact, especially if it gets to the point where now officially all land usage for animal agriculture is stopped. Okay, well, hold on. That's, a, that's an important thing we have to square away because after you... And I've already agreed on this. After you reduce your impact, uh, after a certain threshold, um, you're not really going to have a negative impact on the environment that's in any way more significant than if you were to just go that last step, um, which is why I use the example of the what we would say about someone's health in regards to smoking one cigarette, right? And the same way I can say the environment is good, um, even though people only eat uh, one burger, I could say someone's health is good, even though they've only smoked one cigarette. Um, that last cigarette or that one cigarette, whether they smoke it or not, doesn't really make a difference on the overall negative impact to their health. And it would be the same with the environment. Um, and so the conclusion of that is you can't really make an environmental argument to go vegan because we can get all the environmental benefits by just reducing animal consumption massively take a quick intermission uh you weren't here uh i told the boss uh, the judges i need to go for like 10 minutes here i'll be back and i will yeah. address, i'm gonna write this point down and then yeah. i'll come back and address it so 10 minute intermission okay perfect I think you're muted, maybe, or what can I? Fuck do? my life. Okay, yeah, I was essentially saying that. Um, yeah, go and get, go and drink some uh, water or something. Uh, we're gonna. It's perfect timing anyway because we need a break. Um, okay, not need a break, but we'll take a break as soon as it's come up, and then we'll come up, come back to it in like ten minutes or so. All right. Yep. Perfect. Okay, judges, I'm about to bring you in, motherfuckers. Here we go. Let's see what the verdict is up until now. Yeah. Boss, I need you to shut the <laughs> fuck up, dude. They were they were going so well, and you're like, oh well, actually, 
I have a hypothetical because you know I love my hypotheticals. He said, "Let me oh. throw my framework in the middle of this." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the framework wasn't that bad, but um, it kind of oh. led into a conversation about like um, like new like like a, a conversations that really only like nutritionists are prepared to tackle. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I don't know if this is uh, just going to be something that I do, but. Since both of you guys kind of acknowledged that the whole like nutrition angle wasn't really a vector that you were yeah. interested in arguing, I'm just gonna kind of like not count that round about the uh, about talking about like w uh, veganism from a health yeah. aspect. Since both you, uh, since both Kuro and Vegan kind of agree that like we're not even arguing on these bases here. But yeah, but they brought it up, didn't clear? they? They brought it up, didn't they? They that did was... bring it up. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess that's why I'll, I'll ask when Vegan comes back. But um. Well, I I'm need gonna, a little I'm bit of ask clarity. Them if they want me to score that section or not. No, 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 no. Right. You score everything that occurs. Everything that occurs. Everything so if they bring it up, you score it accordingly. Right. They they obviously know like what it is they want to talk about, and they get to decide what they talk about. And if they bring it up themselves, but the question of the debate is veganism morally obligated. No, it's so morally so imperative. First of all, yeah, um, yeah morally imperative. Yeah, is it it. Is veganism a moral imperative? Um, obligated? What's the fuck a different? Well, if it's well, obligated, means like you should be like forced to do it. Yeah. Like you had, like it's an obligation. Imperative yeah. just means like it should be on the forefront of everyone's yeah. mind. It should yeah. be the most important moral thing. But like if you don't do it, it's, it's like it's, it's not righteous. Like you're get punished. Yeah, it's like it's righteous. Yeah. Um. Okay. What What are the scores looking like? Just tell me who you guys are, have in favor up until now. It's pretty even. <coughs> I have Kuro in the lead. Kuro in the lead. It is also pretty even, and I have Vegan in the lead. No. But remember, he did get both bonus questions right, so. Yeah. Yep. Oh, shit. He did as well. Holy fuck. Yeah, you're right. Those are just plus but, ones, like, by the way. No, right? but. Plus ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus yeah. ones. Okay. But, but literally, like. Actually, I forgot to add that second one on. That second point on. Shit. And now that Talk I am, about dog shit fucking tied. judging, bro. Fucking They're literally where, like tied where, right where, now. Where, where, is, where is this shit? Bruh, bruh, bruh. Dom the Marco. Why did this shit just switch to my other monitor? I'm trying to play Battlefield. Yeah, that's just what you deserve. Other... Oh shit, you can't hear any of that. Okay, great. That's probably yeah, not going to no, be I've, funny I've, by the time I've, you hear it. I have it muted, so. Wait, you have it muted? Yeah. Why do you have my SoundCloud muted? You're not allowed to do yes. that. Your soundboard? Yeah. yeah get fucked. Wait, what do you mean get fucked? I'm the fucking boss, bro. This is my domain. You, Piece you of shit. You have to unmute you that to shit. With my with my audio. Yeah. My this is our server. This is my server. You fucking mute my soundboard. Your veganism offends my cannibalism. Okay. Fire is just on another level. <laughs> Okay, well, that's good to know, guys. That's good to know. Thanks for the information. Judges, you're very helpful. Um, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised, actually. That, that, that seems pretty reasonable on both of your behalfs. Yeah. But I, I, I don't really see how... What do you mean, what? Like, the, your rulings, guys. The, guys. the fact that you guys have them pretty yeah. tied and shit. Yeah. I don't really think... I it. think around an argument or a round or whatever, I'm, I'm dividing mine up into, like, argument rounds. Okay. I think... The one that's probably going to be a lot of points in one person's favor or another is the one that they backed off from, where uh, Vegan brings up like how pragmatic reasons for veganism is also like morally loaded, um, like mm -hmm. climate change or like uh, yeah. you know, like uh, I think he used I think he used secondhand smoking as an analogy, which I think overall so far Vegan's argument on that is pretty strong. So it's going to be interesting to see how Kuro uh, tackles that. Yeah. But then they backed off of that, and then they went to talking about nutrition. And I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't know why they they do that. If they don't want to talk about that, I don't know why Holy. they do that. Yeah. Well, they said they'd circle back to it, so I'm hoping they do. Yeah. Cause... What my question? Nah. My question like sent them forward. Like I I didn't realize that they weren't on that subject. I, like I thought I see the connection between my the question that I asked. And their thing, but obviously nobody thinks the same. So, yeah. nothing wrong yeah, with cannibalism. Just, what? What? What is it, Stella? Yeah, you know. just yeah. What? What is that? You oh, no, yeah. don't go down the cannibalism rabbit hole. It's it, that's a whole like moral relativity question. It's it's no, that's it's, it was new almost chatter. like it's almost, it, oh, it's a new chat. Yeah, I, it's I, almost I, the exact same as like the incest debate because like um. Oh yeah, I know is, my like, position okay. on cannibalism. 
or, or, or they're or like age of consent debates. Like it's just. Um, well, that so one, <laughs> that one's a little bit that's more. So yeah, that's a, that's a that's a spicy like one. The, the, you, you, like you, you know what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, I do. I I don't know how it maps on perfectly because I know like the incest debate almost maps on perfectly to the cannibalism debate. Yeah, the incest debate is like if you have two fully uh like adult consenting people who are related in some way having sex and there's a zero percent chance that they conceive a baby is that morally wrong and then you could say the same you could map that exactly onto cannibalism yep. be like yep. if you have a willing participant who willingly wants to be eaten and a willing person who yep. wants to eat that person is there yeah. uh, you know a moral reason that you shouldn't yeah uh, i think so yes I, I the example i use was it, it, it's not analogous to the the fucking incest one but i get why you're saying it is it that would yeah. be a one-to-one um, the other it's one like is the like the idea of an implicit morality. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. see, the, the difference is for you, boss. If it became legal, then it, then you'd be fine, no matter what. <laughs> you'd be fine with. It. Why do you that's say that, that, motherfucker? My condition for when cannibalism is how you are. Con your policy. Why like, the your fuck do you guys say this? You guys are just yapping. Anike said this once, and now you guys are never gonna fucking let go of it. I'm just the one that said it first. Piece of shit, motherfuckers. No, this is how it works. The reason why I'm there's a condition for cannibalism to be okay. It's like, well, if there's nothing else around to eat except for somebody, yes, it's nothing morally wrong about eating that person, considering that they're 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 dying, and yeah. In other words, they're dying. They're gonna die. They're they're essentially on their deathbed. Should you not eat them, you should eat them. There you go. Nothing wrong with cannabis, as long as, I, as they say it's okay first. Okay, yeah, that's... Ooh-woo, rabbit holes. Yeah, I know where you're going with that far. We all know your, how you behave with animals. Uh, Streamer loves the law. He wants to kiss the law. rabbit holes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he loves not... that. He loves that. <laughs> Fur loves that. Jesus. Streamer loves like the law. He wants to kiss the law. <laughs> Suck a dick, bro. The only reason why I like laws is because they make sense. When laws no longer make sense, I don't like them. Do you know what type of law? Here, I'll prove it to you directly. Laws, I no hate Sharia law. Me. There you go. According no to you guys, to me. according to you guys, I should love Sharia law because it's a law. Don't love it. I hate that shit. It makes zero sense whatsoever. The end. That's just because you're racist. I could go for some rabbit hole too. You guys are on some different type of shit. Don't know what crack you guys are smoking, but guys, this is not the time to fuck some rabbits, okay? We're having serious debate here. Right, let's bring in the debaters. You guys are fucking unhinged, and so is the chat. Thank you again, judges. Suck See you in a bit. Nobody's, nobody's yeah. sucking your asshole. Fucking fetishizing over people licking your, your hole. Okay, debaters, you're back. I'm going to unmute you now. You should be able to hear me. Confirm yep. that you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Vegan? Wait, we can't hear you. Try and speak again. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, testing, that's better. Testing. That's better. Okay, good. Debate deathmatch. We have a moral imperative to fuck rabbits. Oh, Jesus Christ. These guys are on another level. Don't look at chat, by the way, guys. There's some weird shit going on with these chatters today. But yeah, okay, are we back? We took our break. That constitutes the break, by the way, vegan. We just decided to take an early one. And then you guys yep. continue from here, okay? If you need yep. if you need a prompt or you don't know where you're going, I can interject. Yep. But I fucked up last I, I time. Okay, you guys will deal with it. Okay, have a good time, boys. Yep. So we had left off with the uh, Kuro saying, if somebody reduces their consumption of animal products down to next to nothing, it's a negligible change if they reduce that last little bit. I'm going to pose an argument from the other side. Let's say... Because he was using a smoker, so we can stick with smoker. That's fine. We'll just we'll use a smoker analogy of somebody harming the environment versus harming themselves. Um, somebody smokes one cigarette a year. Uh, it would I would then argue with his logic. It would be a negligible change to then smoke two cigarettes a year. Would you agree or disagree? Um, well, I'm not sure that smoking one cigarette a year is negligible enough. Um, but I understand the principle of what you're saying. Yeah. So if we were to change it to something like, let's say you eat one or you smoke one cigarette in your lifetime, um, 
how about two? Is two negligible as well? And my answer to that would be yes. Okay, so then three cigarettes. How about that? Yes. And then four. So it would continue on. And yes. at some point you would say, okay, well, at this point it's no longer negligible. Yes, and at some point it's going to be bad for your health. Yeah. Although, um, logically, one cigarette will still be damaging to your health. Um, yes, but we're concerned with whether or not the person is healthy. It's like we're concerned with whether or not the environment is healthy. Oh, no. I, so I, I don't really care. For, like, I think I said in my intro, I didn't really care for the whole health argument. Like, if somebody were to decide to chug a bottle of olive oil every day, whatever, more power to them. That's what they want to do. Doesn't really matter. Well, that, that's just to make the, the analogy between uh, health, uh, yeah, the health, health of the person and the health of the environment. Yeah. Um, because the same calculation is running for the environment. There's going to be a certain point where your your animal agriculture is big enough that it's making a significant impact, negative impact on the environment. And there's going to be a point below that threshold, which if you go any lower, it's not going to really have any impact on the health of the environment. I would argue it would still have an impact uh, using that reverse argument of, okay, I eat one burger a year, it doesn't really do anything, would be the opinion of somebody. And then, okay, well, what about two burgers? What about three? And then we can get to the point of like, okay, well, they can eat 18 burgers a year and still not have any impact. But logistically, 18 burgers a year still does have an impact. Um, as just anywhere along the scale of animal production is, if we were to go one round of argument, um, you know, there's the inefficiencies of uh, food products going to these animals to feed them as well as the land used for these animals to be grown on. Um, well, that's just going into the particulars of what makes it negative. We don't really have to do that because we both agree that animal, uh, animal or factory farms at the scale they're at right now are negative. We both agree on that. Um, but I don't see how what you're saying really, because you're saying one, so if I smoked one cigarette in my life and the question was, am I healthy in regards to smoking cigarettes? You would say no, because there's some small negligible impact on my health from smoking one cigarette. Technically, yeah. And because then, so my argument would be, yes, that you are being unhealthy in regards to smoking because you're introducing compounds into your lungs. Uh, and then the other argument would be, okay, well, what if you smoke two cigarettes? And then I assume you would say, no, it doesn't really affect your health. And then I go three, and then four, and then five, six cigarettes. And go up however high I want to go for how many cigarettes you want to smoke. Well, I don't. I don't even know why are we scaling it if we're trying to say that smoking one cigarette means I'm unhealthy. I'm just doing the reverse argument, I guess you could say, of um, because I because you had started off with if we have people reduce their animal consumption down to one burger a year, as an example. Uh, the environmental damage has been significantly reduced. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm doing, I'm, I'm playing it the other way where it's like, okay, we start at a significantly reduced amount and then we climb up. At what point would you then say, okay, well now it's actually harmful. And well, it's what not a, sure, sure. It's, it's not about the number exactly. Um, because I don't know what the number is. Uh, but the important, the crux of the argument is that there is a number below which the environment is healthy and going below that would be, would have a negligible impact. Meaning like the impact is so small. I mean, the environment is still healthy either way. So there's no, or you would have to give another reason besides the health of the environment to go even lower than that. Um, and that reason typically is, is the ethical reason. Um, but again, I'm just trying to establish that there's not really an environmental argument uh, in regards to the prompt for veganism, because I can achieve basically the same thing without actually going vegan. But quite the same thing. You would still be, if if we were to look at all other considerations being equal between you and another person who is exactly you, but just vegan, you have one burger more a year, you do more damage to the environment than this, than this hypothetical. Yeah, we do damage to the environment by being alive, right? The point yeah. is whether or not the environment is is in a good spot, whether the environment is healthy. Um, and when we are looking at uh, something like the health of the environment, we're looking at it on the whole, on the net whole, right? 
That's why we can have some things that are on some level um, negative to the environment. But, you know, on the whole, it's fine. The environment is good, blah, blah, blah. And then you can also have the reverse of that, right? And so the point is, and the reason I'm using the word negligible is that if we took two worlds, one where um, people only ate one burger a year and then another world where people eat zero burgers a year, um, what, would, what could we say about the, the environment of these two worlds? And the thing we could say is both of these environments are healthy. And if the, uh, if the burger environment completely eliminated, the, eliminated their burgers, the, the change to the environment would be negligible such that, I mean, they're both still healthy. Like, what is the reason exactly we should get rid of our one burger a year if the environment is in, is in good shape? about as good a shape as it can be. I guess that would delve into environmental science a bit more than I'm capable of explaining or understanding myself. Uh, like, I mean, you know, 7 billion humans uh, and one burger a year would still require a considerable amount of resources to produce the cows to produce that many burgers. Sure, but um, that's that's not that's not really an engagement with the hypothetical because the point is not the number. I may agree that one burger, even that is too high, and that would have a a, a a significant enough impact on the environment. The point is, look, let's take a hypothetical like this, right? Let's call it the lucky pig hypothetical, sure. right? There, there's a there exists a society where once every one hundred years, we we farm one pig. And we split that pig equally between everyone in the society. Sure. You would agree that in this society, um, in regards to uh, the environment, factory farming, our factory farming of this one pig every X amount of years has basically no negative impact on the environment. You would agree with that? It has a negative impact, but I, we, I, I, but on, be, the, but I, on the I, whole, I would be comfortable with your vernacular of basically no. Negative. Yeah, there's basically like we uh, we I mean if we if we eliminated this one pig every 50 years there'd basically be no change in the environment. It's so insignificant that there's basically no difference. And if I were to stay fast to my argument, I would say there still is a difference, however insignificant it is. Yeah, but if the if the difference is if if the difference won't move the needle on the environment being healthy because the environment we're past that threshold by which we can call the environment healthy then who would it be a convincing argument to, to say we can get, we should get rid of this last burger. If you say that to me and I just say to you, well, or this last, whatever we use, let's say we use the, the 50 year pig for like one burger. Yeah. Right. Yep. And let's say you say to me, well, you should, Coral, you should get rid of that last burger. Like it's, it's, it's harming the environment. And, and I respond to you. I mean, the environment is basically as good as it's going to get. Like the burger really doesn't move the needle on how healthy the environment is or how good the environment is much at all. Like, why, why would I get rid of this last burger when the environment's going to be good either way? Uh, I, I think I would, again, being the, the hard line point of, well, it would still be better. Um, but with that in mind, I, I think I would agree to disagree on this point because I don't want it to be stuck on like, okay, well, what about every a thousand years we eat one pig or whatever? Because I, I think the point is there. I understand what you're saying. Um, like, functionally eating one pig every 50 years as you, in, in, in your the lucky pig uh, scenario. Functionally, it's very minute, which is a totally valid argument. But I, if I were to stay on my point specifically, I would say it would still be better for the environment to not do it in the end. Um, yeah. I mean, you can you can you can respond if you'd like, uh, yeah. but I think that would probably be the last thing I would care to stay on the topic of environment, just so we don't. Yeah, you know, we, yeah, we, we, the we whole topic. This. Okay, so we yeah, have we, a di we, 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 we have a direct yeah. question, and after that, after engaging with that on both of you on both of your sides, then you can uh, continue the conversation. So the question is: the hardest problem with vegan or vegetarian is the cultural stigma in the Western world. So who do we, how do we change this stigma without the degradation of social norms? I think that seems like a question for me, since that's more so how would a vegan society come from our culture? Yep. 
uh, uh, Kuro, would you have a specific response to this question, or do you think that's entirely for me? No, no, no. Um, you yeah, go, I, I, I have a response to it. But... Okay. You know, uh, you, vegan. You, you, you can go first. I presume, <laughs> I presume Kuro would be a bit quicker with his okay. response. Okay. All right. Because it is a it is a big question. Yeah. So I think the big problem with veganism in Western culture is not even the veganism itself. It's mostly how it's presented. Um, I think people have intuitions that align um pretty easily with veganism like nobody likes to see animals get hurt um and we see people have massive uh, cognitive dissonance trying to justify why we shouldn't hurt fido but we can hurt i don't know bessie the pig infinitely um and people pe people really they don't like harming animals kind of it, it feels like if you watch people it seems innate that that we don't like harming animals um now obviously that's not necessarily a moral uh justification for harming or not harming animals but uh i think people have pretty vegan intuitions already um again i think the problem would just be the messaging or you know uh there are there are a small percentage of vegans that kind of make it look a little crazy and because it's already kind of a fringe position um the small vocal minority kind of makes the whole movement look wacky um but again in reality i think most people probably have vegan intuitions already. Um, and honestly, I think just given time, we'll probably move towards veganism, um, whether we really argue it or not. Yeah, I would agree with essentially everything you said. Uh, the thing I would add on, just so I also have an answer, um, would be that I think any movement that fights for some drastic philosophical or moral shift in a society again we'll stick with north america because curl you live in north america yep correct I, I i think it's just to keep it easy for the two of us since we know a north american standpoint um yeah like everybody you talk to they're all they would all say they're against animal abuse in the same regard as a vegan would uh it just needs the right there needs to be a right situation for each person each person has their own viewpoint of the world and if they have someone come along and they're really nice about it, maybe that works for that person. And then that person will be like, you know what, I'm, you're actually making me think about this. And then maybe they'll change some of their habits. Um, but I still do think, I guess the one point against Kuro a little bit would be even the extremist vegans, like the ones that are out giving a bad name. Uh, they're still an important aspect because... I, I usually go back to the civil rights movement in America in the 60s and 50s, like Malcolm X and the Black Panthers, well, not necessarily the Black Panthers, but like Malcolm X is like a very aggressive, uh, um, if he were to exist today, people would view him as like out there in a similar fashion, but not the same, obviously, as to vegans today, like the uh, the crazy vegans out there today, where they it's an important part of what they're doing but they just don't seem like they're doing a good job at the moment but let's say hypothetically in 50 to 100 years uh, america becomes vegan boom just we'll just pretend that's the case uh people would look back at those vegans and be like you know what they were extreme in their time but with hindsight being 2020 what they were doing was still right it just seemed absurd at the time because people wouldn't accept it you know, in, in their society. But otherwise, I mean, I agree with Kuro essentially with everything he said. Okay, thank you, debaters. You can continue with your prior conversation. And then I think yeah, so we, we were, we were yeah. about to hop off the topic of the environment. Um, I just want to hammer home that again. If we were to look at the environment, the health of the environment as a whole, um, obviously there are going to be certain things that you can say on a technical level have an impact. But if what we're concerned about is whether or not the environment is healthy, then once we get past that threshold of whether the whether or not the environment is healthy, once we get that healthy environment, um, moving the needle to a little bit more healthy, to negligibly, ne negligibly more healthy, moving the needle over to that um, isn't really an argument that sounds convincing to me if I care about the environment because we've already achieved what we were trying to achieve, which is to get the environment healthy. So that's the last thing I'll say on that. Uh, you can respond to that if you want to. Uh, I'll let you have the last word on that one. We can move to yeah. uh, the, the third pillar, as you, say, as you said. 
Yeah, so the most the most important pillar is going to be ethics. Um, typically, after the environment pillar kind of like falls um, because you fail to convince someone who, who's concerned with the environment uh, to be more concerned when it's already healthy. Um, the, 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 the position is, or the move is, you should stop eating that last burger because the animal is sentient. And by sentient, we mean it has some sort of um, experience of self-awareness as we do, um, which means it has the capacity to feel pain, which means it probably has the capacity to suffer. Um, and you would agree with the, the statement animals are sentient, correct? Yes. If we're okay. going to keep it vague for now, yes. And then we can see if any specifics might have yeah. changes. But yeah, I'll agree. Yeah, so I think that the issue with the issue with the sentience position um, is that, I mean, when you get right down to it, it's an assertion that simply can't be proven. Um, like you said earlier, we can't even prove that other people are sentient. I can't even prove that you're sentient, right? Um, the only person I know that's sentient for sure is me because I'm the one having the experience, um, which is, so how do, so this puts us in a position of sol solipsism, which uh, yeah. most people say is like a kind of a non-argument. Um, but the important part about acknowledging the solipsism is to acknowledge that once you step out of solipsism and you try to justify other minds, you try to justify other beings being uh, sentient, what you're doing is drawing an arbitrary line that you can't really prove, right? We have varying levels of evidence, uh, uh, observational evidence. We look at a being, it's the same thing we do with each other, essentially. Um, I look at you, I look at your behaviors. Um, language is even a part of, of those behaviors because, I mean, technically we could program a robot to speak English. That wouldn't be proof that it's, there's some internal experience going on. Um, and so what we're both doing is drawing arbitrary lines outside of ourselves to justify, um, the prompt essentially. Um, I'm drawing the line at humans. You're drawing the line at animals and I don't know if you could argue that one line, that one arbitrary line is better than another arbitrary line. Um, you specifically, I believe I could argue it, um, but I'm interested in seeing how you would justify that. Sure. Uh, I think just to address the solipsism part, um, if somebody were to come up and say, oh, something along the lines of I'm a solipsist, uh, and using that rationale, murder is fine. I can do whatever I want because I can't prove any of you guys have any, you know, aspect of reality. I can do anything I want. The rational person, that's why I always keep coming back to the rational person. John, the monk, um, oh, monk, oh. not view that as a take that they would accept. Uh, but again, solipsism is a, an extreme case, and I, I think not quite on par with the discussion. Uh, this is kind of real quick. I, I agree. I agree with you that uh, we wouldn't justify someone killing another person um, with the excuse of, uh, well, solipsism. I'm the only person that yeah. has in, internal yeah. experience. Um, but yeah. I mean, that's the thing. We both agree with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so then for the, the main point of drawing the lines at humans versus drawing the lines at animals, uh, I. Because of the knowledge that you've shown already, I can tell you're fairly well acquainted with the discussion. Yeah, I, I assume you know name that trait. Name the trait, yeah. Okay. Is there, a, I guess, you know, for the audience, just because it's a discussion with a lot of people viewing, I'll go through the main aspect of name that trait, and then you can go over your specific issue with it. So yeah. name that trait, just for the audience, uh, name that trait is the vegan argument of uh, a vegan comes up and talks to somebody that isn't vegan and says, hey, um, you think it's wrong to murder a human, right? Uh, why do you think it's okay to murder a cow? What would be, would you name that trait that differentiates a human versus a cow? Why would it be okay to murder a cow, but not okay to murder a human? Name the trait that differentiates those two things uh, to the point where, for example, uh, intelligence, because you also brought this up at the very beginning, um, like in your in your opening statement, I should say, uh, uh, a handicapped person that is less intelligent than a cow. 
why is it still okay to 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 murder cows but not murder the human that is dumber than cows if you name intelligence as being the trait that differentiates humans and cows so with that in mind just so the just so the just so the uh chats or all the viewers know the main crux of name that trait uh Kiro, you can say what your main concern with that argument is uh i don't have any concerns with the argument so if i were to ask you then because you said you drew your line at humans and i drew mine at animals or yes. in my specific case i would say like sentient beings yes. um and then i asked okay name the trait why is it okay to harm a sentient being but not okay to harm a human why would you draw your line at humans because humans are sentient and then i would say how would you define sentience well, um, I should ask, rather i ask yeah yeah so uh, sentience is just having a, a personal subjective experience of the world um typically capable of experiencing pain and suffering although i don't think that's necessarily relevant when it comes to shit because i would never say you could kill a person even if they didn't have uh, the capacity for suffering or pain, because I think that depriving them of, of their life is still wrong. Um, but uh, that would be the definition. Why would um, I'll address the first point, I guess. Um, actually, could you say the first half of what you said there? Just so I don't get it wrong. Yeah, sure. You asked me what the trade is uh, for yeah. the name, the trade argument, the trade yeah. I gave is sentience. Yep. Yeah, and you asked me to define that, and I said uh, sentience is just the subjective, the personal subjective experience um, of a being capable, typically capable of feeling pain and suffering. Okay. Uh, to my knowledge, um, infants or newborns don't have a subjective experience mm -hmm. in the sense that usually people, like, they don't have thought in the way that you or I would have or any other adult. Um, mm -hmm. Would it then be okay to kill an infant? Or no. No. Okay. No. Uh, because they're human. So is it a genetic base then, or what? Or or um, what would you say? Um, I mean, we can discuss what makes someone human. We can use genetics. We can use, um, I don't know, some sort of, like, tribal familiarity. So, like, maybe an alien can come to, like, the human planet or they come to planet Earth and we kind of, like, adopt them into our speech. It can be something like that, but um, roughly what would stop me from killing a newborn or thinking that the killing of a newborn is justified would be that they're human. Okay. I guess I got two. I'm going to write this down just so I don't forget. Uh, sorry, one second. I'll do the, I think I'll start with the simpler one. Um, do you know what a haplogroup is? Uh, in um, I've genetics? heard of it, but I don't know what that is. So a haplogroup is like a large population of humans that are genetically distinct from these other haplogroups. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it as simple as that. Um, yeah. And there's multiple haplogroups across the planet. Uh, yeah. With that in mind, how come you draw your line at human and not your specific haplogroup? Why wouldn't, so that the argument of, okay, well, I think killing a, a human baby is wrong. Why wouldn't you take a step back and say, okay, I think killing a baby in my haplogroup is wrong. And then it's okay to kill any baby outside of my haplogroup. And in this case, for clarification, I'm targeting specifically the genetic aspect of um, why something would be okay or not. What well, does haplogroup here encompass every human? Uh, so th there's multiple haplogroups of humans. And oh, each... you're saying it's a, it's a distinction within humans. Yes, yeah, a genetic distinction within humans. Yeah. Can we and define what is haplogroup group for the audience? Group. Yeah. Uh, it's it's to as simple as possible. Yeah. Uh, be like the difference is, between races, something like that. Black people. Versus in a white way, people yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. It's, it it's seems not like a way to think about it. Asian, but yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. It it's seems like an easy way to conceptualize genetic. it, though. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. So it's, yeah. it's a, a genetic distinction. Why would it not be okay to do it in that case? Or um, would it be okay? Or are, are both of the people from the different haplogroups, are they, are they both human? Yeah. Oh, that would be the reason, because they're both human. So why would you draw your line at human and not at a different haplogroup? Like, what is your rationale that humans are the ones that get this distinction? Because I care about humans. Um...
Mm. And you you don't you you can't rationalize why it's specifically humans and no other line. You wouldn't be able to draw another line anywhere else. Oh, I could. Or or, or I rather, could you, you could. Could you ration? Or rather, could you rationalize a line at at, at, at any other uh, distinction? Uh, well, I don't know if is is I care about them not a good enough rationalization. I can give you reasons why I think I care about them, but um, ultimately, I'm just communicating to you that I, I care about the group humans. Sure. So, I mean, not to detract, this would go back to the emotional appeal where you were saying that uh, yep. I was wrong because I just had an emotional appeal for something. Um, uh, if we were to go to it, though, you did you say you had rationalizations for it beyond that's just what you feel or what you care uh well i they're not like i can give you what i think are the reasons um they may or may not be the actual reasons because i'm not omnipotent um sure. yes. but the thing that i can tell you for sure is that i care about humans so i can give you reasons such as i am a human i grew up around humans humans raise me i'm in a tribe of humans all of my friends are humans like these are some reasons um, why I believe I care about humans. But you, I guess it would go back to that main point of you, you're not able to rationalize why that line is drawn at humans and not at some sub spec of genealogy or you know, like your half of your, or your, you know, your extended family or your immediate family. You, you can't, you aren't able to draw a distinction of why it stops specifically at humans besides emotional uh, appeal? Um, I don't think I can give a reason that would be better or worse than anybody. Well, actually, I think reasons I have could be better than someone who would who would try to draw lines along capital groups. Like if someone said, um, just for the rough example, oh, I prefer Asians and Black people over white people and uh, Indian people, right? I think I could give reasons that are more convincing than whatever reasons that guy could give um, for including all humans. Um, but beyond that, I'm not sure how I would, would rationalize what seems to just be a base axiom. Sure. Um, would you apply uh, this um, moral regard to our closest genetic cousin outside of humans? Let's say, hypothetically, Neanderthals uh, existed today. Would you apply it to them as well? They were sentient, yeah. Um would do you consider chimpanzees to be sentient? Our our mo our most common uh rel or sorry. Our why am I blanking on the term? Our relative. Our, common, our yeah, closest I, I relative. understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So there are certain animals that probably have sentience, at least to a convincing enough degree that I'm okay putting them in the human bucket. So we're talking about great apes, I think corvids, dolphins. Um, a couple of, a couple other animals I can't name off the top of my head. Um, importantly, yeah, these animals do not include like the typical factory farmed animals. So chickens, pigs, cows. Um, but yeah, even some animals sure would even fall into this purview of, of sentience that I'm talking about. Sure. And if we could go back, what was your definition of sentience again? I'm just, just going to write it Stop yeah, yeah, just just able to have a subjective experience of the world, typically capable of experience being pain and suffering. So definitely. Okay. Um I I guess I would ask them what you mean by a subjective experience. Like um, how would how would you how would one excluding solipsists, uh yeah. how would one be able to say that another person has a subjective experience? Well, solipsism or not, a subjective experience is just me or what the subjective experience is, is the thing that I am experiencing right now. Um, it's the thing that makes me me, and it's the thing that makes me not you, right? And presumably, because I draw my line past humans, um, presumably you are having this, the, a similar experience to what I'm having, where you have your own subjective experience, your inter internal thoughts. Um, and this is a thing that makes you, you, and not me. Um, that's the thing I'm referring to when I say sentience. Okay. Um, would it not a rational person think dogs and cats have a sentient experience? Or pigs because of how we can watch what they do and how they act in 
whatever situation they're in. They might, but the crux of that is just, um, like I said, outside of solipsism, we're drawing two arbitrary lines, right? Yep. We both have our line past human. Your line just goes farther and encompasses yep. uh, certain animals, right? Mm-hmm. So the the justification for, because remember, we to, to as soon as we go outside ourselves, it becomes just arbitrary, right? Yeah. So to even give a justification is a little bit. All we're really trying to do is convince other people, um, to maybe adopt our our points of view when we when we do this. Um, yeah. So for humans, it's just going to be I am a human, right? And I have structures in my brain, uh, as well as central nervous system that make me very, very, very similar to other humans. In fact, I believe the closest thing to me is going to be another human in terms of like uh, just genetic makeup, um, just just the un- we don't even have to go to genetics, just the underlying structures of another human are going to be the closest to me because I am also a human, right? Yep. Along those same lines, there are animals like a dog, for example, and they differ more than a human does to me, right? To the degree they differ can be argued, but certainly no one would disagree that a human is more similar to a human than a human is similar to a dog, right? Yeah. And so um, that would be the basis by which I draw the line and I say, okay, um, you, you're sentient. Um, My mother, she's sentient. My best friend, he's sentient. Um, But Fido, he's not sentient because he's uh, X distance further away from being similar to me than a human is. I guess then for the good watching us, as you said, since we're also talking to them in a way, uh, my argument for sentience would be, as I stated before, the ability to suffer, to experience reality and everything. Um, And if we were to go off of your description of like, okay, my brain is very similar to the brain of another human. uh, And then a dog, Fido, uh, has a very different brain. But if we were to compare the structures of the brain, they still have all the same lobes that a human brain has. And we can apply that to essentially every other animal. Not every other animal, but the majority of them. Like cow obviously has a brain um, with analogous structures to it. And it's just smaller and it's focused. It's It's got larger structures in one regard to, you know, benefit it in, in its own way. Uh, and then we have a, a bigger frontal lobe as an example, which allows us to have more uh deeper thought on things but they still have these same structures they still have a frontal lobe they still are able to do the basic things we're able to do same thing with a pig or a chicken any other animal they still have analogous brains just different sizes or they're specialized in some specific way and so i think uh in my opinion uh a rational person with that in mind of the art of, of your argument of um, these people are similar, more similar to me, therefore they're sentient. These guys a little bit less similar to me, like a dog being less similar to you in brain structure. I think my argument would hold more weight because it's, it's the majority, the primary stuff is still there. It's just the size difference and the specialty of what the brain is for in a specific animal is focused on something else. So look, here's the thing, right? I noticed you just said there uh, that their brains are, the difference is small. Um, I try to avoid using like, uh, or or, or specifically implying a a distance between the human brain and the dog brain. For sure. Yeah, but but the fact of the matter is, um, even if we say that the structures are Essentially, the argument you're making is that they're similar enough that, you know, we have enough there to kind of, you know, just let's just draw the line outside of outside of animals because, you know, they their brains are, you know, decently similar. You know, the structures are decently similar. So let's just draw the line outside of there. Right. And um, then you said at the end there, it's a, it's a small it's a small distance. It's a small difference. Um, yeah. And you could say that. Right. But the reality is, if I'm just going to use. Um, observational evidence and I look at what a human can do and then I look at what a dog can do, right? The difference is there and the behaviors behaviors and abilities that I observe, they're going to be massive differences to me, right? (laughs) Dogs can't do physics, 
right? A dog can't do calculus, right? There are many things I can name that a human can do that a dog can't do. I think it's arguable as to whether even a dog can 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 abstract. I'm not even sure if they have that ability, right? Um, and I say that to say that the difference, just as you could argue that it's small because we have similar underlying structures and blah, 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 right? I could argue the differences are massive because if I just observe these two groups of dog and human, the human is way closer to me than the dog. Astronomically closer to me than the dog. Um, so I just wanted to make that point. Yeah. Um, if if going off of the uh, if a dog can't do physics, uh, if we're to step back to the moral argument, if a dog can't do physics, therefore they aren't uh, given moral rights or a, a pow or a pig or whatever. I mean, can a baby do physics? Well, uh, can, uh, two, two two responses. One, a baby is human, so they already have the moral consideration, and then two is um the dog it's not nece- it's not about the physics per se it's just the physics is just another action that a human or someone from the group of humans can perform that we've never seen a single dog not one dog in the entire groups of dogs perform right yeah. that would be something that i can weigh as a, as a massive difference between humans and dogs sure i mean i get that the 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 human part still goes back to just the arbitrary line with I yeah, there that were that were both yes. there's, there's yeah. no rationale of like why draw a line at human because genetically no 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 more than there is for for drawing it outside of animals yeah and so that's what i'm saying the genetic line is pointless uh we should find some other line i don't rely on genetics to say that oh if they're genetically they're an animal then then they get moral consideration i I'm not the well, one. It's not, it's not just that. You can be an animal to have moral consideration. You just have to have sentience. Yeah. So well, I don't think we should farm dolphins, for example. No. So just any animal, like any genetic. My argument isn't that a genetic line can be is drawn or can be sufficiently regarded. Um, I maybe there's a misunderstanding between the two of us, but I I'm not using a genetic distinction being a valid argument. And I think you were when you were saying that as long as they're a human, they still have moral worth. Humans being obviously a genetic distinct. Well, it's, it's not about a valid argument because, like I said, once we go outside of solipsism, we're drawing arbitrary lines, right? So we're just stating yeah. whatever our axiom is. Sure. And if I'm saying mine, my line goes outside of humans, um, meaning that it encompasses all humans, and you're just saying yours encompasses. Um, all or some or most or way more animals than I'm encompassing. Those are both arbitrary lines. It's not really about validity. We're just saying what our axioms are. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. I, I, again, I think it's just, it might just be a, I'm not wording it right. Because um, you're you're including humans because genetically they're human. Uh, and, they're, and they're sentient, yes. Uh, even uh, mentally handicapped humans that are to the point where they are not sentient or infants, for example, that aren't sentient, are they included as well? Yeah, because they're still human. So genetically, because they're human, they're given worth. Um, I don't. I mean, we can say genetically for the purposes of, of the conversation. Um, just acknowledging that you can, you can hack that up in different ways that aren't just genetic. You can use. You can come at it from a from a different viewpoint. Um, but the important part is that the group, whatever group I'm referencing, encompasses all humans. But that group is a a genetic distinction, right? I could be. Sure. So, again, going sticking with just infants or mentally handicapped people that are mentally handicapped to the point that they're no longer sentient, they're still granted protection because yeah, genetically. Because they're human, yeah. Okay, so it, it the, genetics is still an important aspect of why some animals, because humans are animals, because why some animals deserve moral consideration. Yeah, again, for the we can we can do use that for the sake of the conversation. I'm just pointing out that there might be a different way to categorize all humans. Like for example, if you're religious, you might say all humans have a soul. Animals don't have souls, so I care about humans over animals. And then you might also throw sentience in there. Um, that's the only reason I'm I'm throwing that caveat in there. Um, I'm okay with using genetics, but the point of it is not it being about genetics. It's about encompassing all humans. However, way sure. you want to dice that up. Sure. Go back to the rational person. And although in in our world right now, the majority of people are religious in some way, so you could argue 
with my argument, you could argue that, well, if the average person, if you consider the average person rational uh, and religion dominates the most, uh, that religion, religion is rational. Say, yeah. 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 Um, outside of that, um, I think the rational person wouldn't necessarily like if you're if we'll get rid of the religion part, just the rational person, they wouldn't say that genetics alone is a reason why somebody would be sentient or somebody would be of moral worth like a, a baby, even though they're not sentient, they wouldn't say, oh, because they're human, therefore they have moral worth. I think they would a rational person would still say, well, clearly the baby can experience pain. Uh, clearly the baby still experiences reality in their own way, just not nearly as in depth as us because their brain is so small and not developed. If that makes well, that's sense. just saying that, that they, that's just saying that you care about the, or that the rational person cares about the baby because they believe the baby is sentient. Um, I believe at some point the baby is sentient as well. I'm just saying if you were to remove that sentience, the baby doesn't mo lose moral consideration because it's still human. I can't say sorry. Say that one more time. Yeah. So I'm just saying that um, what you described seems to be the rational person looking at a baby and saying this baby deserves moral consideration because they're sentient. Um, and I'm doing that as well. I'm just saying if you remove that sentience, the baby still has moral consideration because it's human. Uh, I No, I think you're saying, or, or your argument would be, uh, once they get to a certain point of development, they would become sentient. And I'm saying that they're sentient from the beginning. Bruh. And so... The rational yeah, but, but it, do, it doesn't really matter, at least for my argument, because the baby would, because it's human, it already has moral consideration. Like, I'm sure yeah, if, yeah, I, if I spoke to a, this rational person and I said, and I could prove the baby wasn't sentient, they wouldn't be okay with me kicking the baby or something like that. They tell me, hey, that's morally wrong to kick the baby. Um, and we can speculate on why they would say that. Um, but why I would say it is because they're human. I think I'll, I'll say one more thing on the point and then you can respond if you'd like. And I yep. think we could probably move on to the next point just so we don't, you know, again, yeah, I, yeah. I don't care to, it's not exciting to the audience to go on the same point over and over. Sure. Um, uh, so I think again, it would go back to you saying that because genetically they're human, therefore they have moral worth, even if they're sentient or not, even yeah. though the main point relies on, I care if they're sentient. Um, my point being that I think they are sentient from the beginning. And I would be hard pressed to find someone who could convince a rational person that babies are not sentient. Therefore, in my case, it would be not permissible to do, you know, to kick a baby in any in any way. I, I don't think a person could argue to another rational person, hey, this baby isn't sentient in some way. Are we talking about newborns? Or are we talking about babies including in the womb? Is that my uh, the decision? It, however, however you'd want to take it. Um, well, the answer is different depending because we'll, we'll say newborn people, for the sake of our argument. We'll say newborn. Yeah. yeah okay. Because the point is, I some people are going to say, or a considerable portion of uh, the West believes that a baby is not sentient up to a certain point, right? That's sure. why we have abortion. We'll, we'll, st we'll stick with we'll stick with newborn just to stay on the top because I don't I don't want to get into the abortion debate because that's something else so we'll, we'll stay with the new so so with a newborn in mind um i don't think somebody could convince a rational person that a newborn is not sentient wait he must have cut off because we can't hear him now give it yeah. give it give him a give him a minute sorry give me you... yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. it's okay could you repeat the last like 30 seconds of what you said? Sorry about oh, that. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was saying that we'll just avoid the whole abortion debate since it's another topic. Um, we'll yeah. Stick with, we'll stick with just a newborn. Um, I don't think uh, someone could convince a rational person that a newborn baby is not sentient. Probably and not. Probably not. But I mean, I don't think, I don't see how that has any effect on any arguments being made right now um, because I, the baby would have moral consideration on both fronts. For me on the fact that it's human and the fact that it's uh sentient i think because um the whole sentient my side of the sentient argument would be the ability to you know suffer or 
experience reality in their own way, even if it's less evolved than our own. Um, with that in mind, not being able to convince somebody of a baby or a newborn not being sentient wouldn't be possible. But going back to the genetic thing of, uh, I, I guess I don't want to circle back to that. I'll, I'll just leave that as that that'll be the last topic of that all that I will say. You can respond, and then we could maybe move on to another point. Yeah. So just to summarize the the sentience that we're on, the idea is that uh, we all know we're self aware, having a uh, sentient subjective experience. Um, we know that because we're literally experiencing it when we're just defining what that experience is and we're calling it sentient. So presumably all of us have this, right? So we know what it is, um, but we don't know if anyone outside of ourselves has a sentience. We can't prove that, right? I can't hop inside of your mind. Um, so in order to get to valuing other people on the basis of sentience, which is something that most people do, um, we have to draw an arbitrary line outside of ourselves I'm drawing it at human and some animals, like uh, some apes, uh, dolphins, corvids, um, animals that seem to have sentience based off of some um, whatever tests um, that could go either way. And uh, my opponent is drawing it outside of um, many more animals than I am. Um, I want to remind everyone that both of these lines are arbitrary. Uh, we can make arguments for why we feel one line is better than the other. But the fact of the matter is, they're both arbitrary lines. Most people eat meat to some degree. Um, they believe, um, well, they may believe uh, the same way I believe, um, at least with their actions, because they, they're supporting the, the animal agriculture industry. Um, and what else to say on that? Oh, there's this point that comes up that uh, if you if you have animals outside of your let's say arbitrary circle of uh, of moral consideration, that that means you can treat animals any kind of way. I don't think this is true. You can just give them moral consideration um, on the basis that they might be sentient. So maybe you don't justify infinite negative actions against them, um, and then that also leaves you open to this idea of well. Um, if we could get whatever we get from animal products, um, identical enough from a different source, then maybe we can start arguing about veganism being a moral imperative. Um, you can even argue that we could work towards that world. So maybe, uh, me as the meat eater in the discussion, maybe I can say something like, yeah, it's, it's a good thing to work towards a world where we minimize animal suffering on the basis that maybe they can suffer, um, and we already know there are certain alternatives to animal products coming out that have a much lower chance for there to be suffering involved. Um, and so I can advocate to push towards that world as an ethical position without having to give up animal products um, on the whole, at least currently. Very well said. Uh, conveniently, there was two points that you had mentioned. Uh, I think we only have time for one. So we'll, we'll, we'll go for the one that I think would be more enticing of the topic. Um, you said, and I absolutely agree with you on this, just so everybody knows, um, our lines are arbitrary. Yep, 100% true. Um, every single line that somebody has about morals is they have this arbitrary line that they have cut off of like what's okay and what's not. And um, with that in mind, the argument would be in that regard, uh, you and I have different arbitrary moral lines. But that's, that's true. Um, would then it be okay, let's say we invite a serial killer as a third party of this discussion, and he says, my arbitrary moral line, as long as I'm not harmed, every, anything's okay, so they can go and kill any human. Yeah, I would. I presume you would say that would be wrong. Um, yep. with, that, with that in mind, I, I keep coming back to the rational person, what a rational person would think. Um, and I think the, a rational person would agree with you in that regard, the extreme case of, okay, a serial killer saying humans have no value as long as it's not me being harmed, I can do whatever I want. And then you come in and say, you know, it'd be wrong to kill a chimpanzee or a dolphin or one of the, the intelligent animals as you had listed. And mm -hmm. I Indian think, specifically. yeah, yeah. Um, I think I could still argue to the average rational person that it would then be still wrong to cause, as you said, infinite harm to 
an animal under your definition that does not have sentience. Yeah. It's just about the potential of sentience means that we should at least temper our actions. And mind you, it's not a new concept. We already do this. If I told you, if I, if we have a hypothetical where there are two doors and I said, um, opening these doors may kill a being if they stand behind the door. There's a 1% chance, chance there's a being in the left door. There's a 70% chance there's a being in the right door. Um, or, uh, actually we can keep that up. If we just keep the one versus 70%, right. Then you would feel like you have a moral obligation to go through the left door because there's less of a chance, right? Now, if I told you there's some, if I give you three doors and I give you three different percentages, 70% for one, 1% for another door, 0% for another door, and you're going through one of the doors, uh, you would try to pick the one that minimizes the chance of there being a person behind there um, the most, despite the fact that you're still going to go through the door at the end of the day, going to one of the doors. Um, so we already have this type of consideration for potential harm. Um, but that potential harm doesn't mean we have to get rid of animal agriculture. It just means uh, we're not going to justify some sort of infinite suffering towards animals um, on the basis that, again, they might be sentient. So uh, we can advocate for not uh, or minimizing the unnecessary harm to animals without actually get, getting rid of all the harm, um, which I would view as a, as a sort of ethical position. Sure. The reason I highlight that is because, again, sometimes these arguments, the mediator gets pushed into, okay, well, um, since animals aren't sentient at all, that means we can kick dogs and rape cows and infinite holocaust and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just saying that I can say those things are wrong on the basis of the potential sentience that animals have without getting rid of all animal consumption currently, at least. Okay, my response would be if there's a potential that they are sentient, uh, like if science can't determine from our standpoint of our knowledge, because, you know, as you said, we're not omniscient. If the potential is there that they could be sentient, it's wrong to cause, as you said, like infinite suffering, a holocaust. Why would it then be okay to cause a minor holocaust? Then? Why, would it, why would it be wrong to cause an excessive amount of suffering to them, as long as it's not infinite? because they haven't been proven to be sentient. At, for example, we can stick with cows as the example, because cows are obviously a, a farmed animal. Um, and from your standpoint, we can't prove that cows are sentient in your uh, idea of what sentience is. Why, why would it be wrong to cause infinite suffering to them? Because we, can't, we still can't prove sentience. The that. same reason it would be wrong to walk through the door where there's a 70% chance you might kill a person. It would be the same reason. You're just weighing the potential of the sentience into the moral calculus. So why can we cause any suffering to cows with that, in, with the 70%? Because uh, we accept, we, because we accept, we accept chances like this every day, right? There's a chance that through some bizarre event, you literally walking out your door could cause a chain of events that kills a person and you walk out your door every single day right we take chances like this all the time we allow people to drive cars we know that there's a chance that or not even there's a chance we know guaranteed that some people yeah. are going to die as a result of us driving cars we still allow that um and i'm just i'm just viewing animal agriculture through this lens that we already view a lot of different things through um instead of just imbuing them with the guaranteed sentience like we do with other people, we can just measure the potential sentience that they have. Um, and by doing this, uh, we, uh, we kind of fall in line against the prompt that vegan, veganism is a moral imperative. Um, we can still exercise moral contemplation over how we treat animals without actually getting rid of factory farming, like I said, at least currently. I would disagree because... I'll, I'll, I might need to think for a second here um, about the, you know, you you take an action and there's a percent chance you can harm a human, which in this specific scenario, we know humans are sentient. And I'll try to keep it based on your ideal of what sentience is. Um, so with factory farming, let's say there's a 10% chance cows are sentient. Yes. Uh, just there's there's a small chance cows are sentient 100 percent of cows on a factory farm are killed so with that 10 percent 
uh, 10% chance that they're being sentient, it's still 100% chance that they're going to die. So I would still argue that would be wrong with that argument of if there's a percent chance that an individual could be sentient or you could harm them in some way, uh, when, it, when it comes to farming, then I definitely think for sure it would be wrong because it always ends up in the death of the animal, regardless of if they can be proven to be sentient or not, or somewhere along the scale, because it's a 100% death chance. Well, let me ask you this. If we could prove 100% that cows weren't sentient, then what would be the problem with farming them outside of actionalities like the negative impact on the environment? What's the ethical problem with farming a cow if they don't have sentience? If it can be proven that they aren't sentient, then I personally wouldn't have a problem. Yeah, and so you would be okay with factory farming them, at least ethically. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. If so they are, now they are not sentient, but the yeah, proof. So and then so then on the other side of that is, if they were one hundred percent sentient, or there was a one hundred percent chance they were sentient, then you would definitely be against them being factory farmed, as would I, as would most people, right? Now here's the issue: is there's a chance that they're sentient. We're not sure what the chance is. You gave ten percent. I think ten percent is pretty high. I would probably, and this is all arbitrary, but I would probably pick it at probably maybe sub two, sub one percent. I'd pick it somewhere there. Yep. Um, the problem is we can just weigh that into the calculus of how we treat them on the basis of, okay, maybe they're sentient. So that means let's not try to cause infinite harm to them just in case that little chance that they are sentient. But also, so we can't prove that they are sentient and we get some other enjoyment from animal products that we can farm them and we can argue a, uh, in a reasonable way. So we don't have people in the factory farms kicking cows because if the point is we want the cows for food and kicking doesn't really add to that goal of us getting food from the cows. And also we're weighing in that the cow maybe, you know, has a small chance of being sentient, then we can just advocate don't kick the cow while still farming the cow. Sure. Um, I think just a minor point we don't need to address it really but like if let's say the person kicking the cow they get enjoyment out of it and then there's nothing like that would be benefiting you but um i think my last thing to say just because i know it's coming up on 10 30 and i think uh the boss likes to have closing yep yep we have a Uh, question to ask you guys but finish it off no worries um I think even if there's a, just a 1% chance that cows are sentient, uh, in your hypothetical, even if there's only a 1% chance, I still think it would be wrong to cause 100% death and suffering to these beings, which is what currently happens in reality. Uh, the other half of the argument would be, I think a rational person would agree that a cow has sentience because cows clearly do show symptoms of distress. Uh, they show an aversion to pain and everything that you would see with a human or a dog or any other, like a dolphin or a a corvid. Um, So I think the rational person would view a cow as being sentient or a much higher rate of sentient, like a percent chance if we were to go to that, much higher than 1%, as you said. And I still think the argument would be in my favor of not causing a 100% chance of suffering, no matter how low the percent chance of sentience there is. Uh, that'll be my last point on here. I'll let you respond and then we can do our question slash closing argument. Yeah. So it feels like you're just, or not, it feels like you are advocating in a world where that it, it, it just seems absurd because we'd have to take certain steps to make sure we don't, or we have to take every step to make sure we're not harming, uh, other beings. Um, like I said, when you open your door, there's a chance that you cause a chain of events that kills a human that you still open your door every day. Um, I don't know if you drive a car personally, but in our society, we've made it okay to drive cars that has some, um, that has some cost that we know for sure will take out some amount of sentient humans. Um, so again, we're running these calculations all the time uh, in society. And not only are most people already okay with eating meat, and you could argue a lot of their emotional responses are just that, emotional responses that don't really um that don't really say too much about their moral position especially given the fact that probably the average person doesn't have a good grasp on um moral concepts or they don't argue about moral concepts or they can't defend a position 
even if it is the correct position um, through argumentation because they just don't have a, a firm grasp over the arguments for morality. Um, so there's that. And then there's the fact that, again, just because we are factoring far factory farming them doesn't mean we have to give them zero mor moral consideration, but giving them some moral consideration doesn't mean we have to stop factory farming them. Um, because again, the lower that chance that their sentient is, the more we have to weigh in other factors like our happiness from the products that we get from them. Um, so yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, yep. we did have a question, but you guys just happen to roll onto it like not mm -hmm. like it means nothing, and literally finished on that exact point. I don't know if you want to just like engage with this. Uh, I think you pretty much have, but I mean, go for it anyway. Is it reckless to act like they are definitely not sentient? In other words, talking about the animals. Um, he's assuming he is making assumption. The chatter here, which is that. Even if we think the chance of sentience is low, the downside is so big, hence the assumption. Um, obviously, you guys are going to be the ones to figure that out if we're wrong about that. In other words, the, I, I think you pretty much get what is being said. And the question is, yeah. obviously, yeah. Yeah, look. Oh, did you want to go first? You go I, first. I, I feel like, coincidentally, yeah, I, I essentially answered the question. Yeah, I do. Just, yeah, I, we do. Yeah, yeah it was it's of... Uh, do we cause 100% chance, or is there, a, is it, are we okay with a 100% chance of causing suffering and death to beings, even if they have a greater than 0% chance of being sentient? Which was essentially what the discussion was, but I'll let you, if you want more to tack on. Because yeah, look, the, the, the fact of the matter is, we know by driving cars, there's a 100% chance that certain human beings, people we grant sentience to, will die we know this for sure and yet we still drive cars right the fact of the matter is when we're dealing with animals and whether they're sentient or not we can again make this moral calculus of what we're allowed to do the, to them or the extent of what we're allowed to do to them assuming that there's a small chance that they're sentient right um right. if i pegged sentience at like let's say a, just arbitrarily a 0.1 percent chance then engaging in factory farming, holding for other externalities like, um, you know, the negative impact it has on the environment, just ethically, factory farming would be a more ethical thing to do than driving because we know for a fact that there are sentient beings that are harmed by allowing people to drive, right? We just decide that the benefits that we get from driving are worth more than those lives. That's exactly what that calculus is. Um, so again, you can advocate that we don't kick cows and we don't treat them like absolute shit because there's a chance they might be sentient. That doesn't mean we can't farm them. Sure. Okay. I think my last response, again, just so, because it was just about the question and you had another viewpoint for it. Yep. I'll say my last bit and then I'll let you respond because again, I'm the affirmative, so I'll let you have the last word. Um, I think essentially what you're hammering on is uh, threshold deontology. Have you heard of that philosophy? I have. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, that's essentially what it is. And I think the majority of a rational, per a rational person would view threshold deontology as being the way they view life as well. Because obviously, if you're to go up like, hey, is it wrong to harm another person? They would say no. And it's like, well, do you drive a car? And they'll more than likely say yes. And then you'll ask us, okay, okay, so what allows you then to drive that car if you're against harming people, knowing that driving a car will harm a person, excluding like in a car crash, like you're just emitting pollution which we do know harms people um so there there is some level of damage being caused to other people but it's not an intentional damage like a person's not driving a car or sorry let me take one step back a person driving a car to get to work uh will be viewed differently to the average rational person than if somebody were to get one of those um I, I've only ever seen a truck, so I'm just going to stick with the trucks here, where they like slam on the gas right as they're passing a pedestrian. And so all that, like all the uh, exhaust just like blows out on them. One of them is an intentional action, and one of them is what a rational person would accept as a negative externality that would be okay. And when it comes to animals, um, everything we do on a farm is always intentionally bad to those animals. Whereas everything we do to humans, 99% of the time, is unintentional. We don't want to do it, but a rational person would say, I accept that 
I'm okay doing this damage to others and I'm okay with them doing this damage to me um, because it's they're not intentionally, do, they're not doing it to mess with me, except in the very rare case where a guy will roll coal over a pedestrian. And the rational person would then look at that person rolling coal saying, hey, yeah, that was an asshole move. Like that definitely was morally wrong. Um, that's how I would view it. I'll let you respond and then we can do closing arguments. Yeah, so the difference in those two situations, and there is a difference, but the difference is we know humans are sentient. That's the difference maker. Um, that's why when we're weighing that calculus, because you're, br you're bringing up the example that, well, or you bring up the point that, well, we know, or, or rather, mm, how do I put this into words? You're bringing up the point that we know for a fact that animals are, or hold on, let me, let me, let me word this right. Cause I don't want to misquote you. Give me one second. Let me think. You're saying the point of driving a car isn't to hurt humans. That's just a negative externality of driving cars. The point of farming an animal is to kill the animal to get their meat. And so at the end of the day, you're looking at who we target and saying, that's a, a difference that I should be considering. Um, and I do acknowledge that is a difference, but there is a difference about the two situations. And the difference is humans are sentient and we assume that for sure, right? So we just assume that humans are sentient and animals, well, we're not sure. Maybe they're sentient, maybe they're not. Um, you can put different numbers on that. You certainly, I would probably agree that what we're doing to animals right now um, is too much given the fact that they might be sentient, but again the position i'm ultimately going to drill down to won't be veganism um it'll just be some level of reduced harm to the animals but not eliminating it um completely um so again the difference you highlight is that when we drive a car we're not trying to hurt humans on purpose that's just an externality of driving whereas when we're farming cows the point is to hurt the cow to get the meat um but my response is the difference in those situations is we know for sure that the human is sentient um, we're not sure if the cow is sentient. So that's going to make the calculation different. Sure. Okay, debaters, thank you very much for participating. We're going to call the judges after we hear their closing statements. So go take it away at uh, Vegan. Tell us uh, your closing thoughts, if anything has changed in your mind, if you've been swayed in any different direction than previously just give us a general overview of your thought process at this time sure yeah i, I mean Kuro's definitely one of the most knowing pers peoples that i've ever uh, discussed this with i mean he knew every argument that i was gonna have so i didn't want to play around oh well what about blah 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 i just it was nice being able to go straight to the core of the argument i i, I appreciate that um, and I think at the at the at that tail end of the argument there, um, we were definitely going over uh, the um, why am I blanking threshold the ontology the like what will a rational person accept as being morally permissible even if it harms another provenly sentient being. And I'll go back to the beginning when I was saying. With my opening statement, the definition of veganism. Uh, veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or other purpose. Uh, I mean, that's essentially threshold deontology. Um, obviously, going back a smidge, I actually bike to work, all biked by groceries. I just have a little bicycle, not even an e bike, just leg powered. And that's how I get around everywhere I go. Um, but I know not everybody can do that. Uh, but I do know that the average person that exists in America or in any first world country, really, I know for a fact they are able to drastically reduce their reliance on animal products. And um, going to the, uh, the second part of the definition of veganism, and by extension, promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefits of animals, humans, and the environment. Um, everything that we do, that we use animals for, I think we currently have the technology to replicate in a sufficient manner. In the case of, you know, eating beef, I think impossible meat is 
a sufficiently good taste and texture analog to beef. It's not perfect, but I think it is a good enough counter to it that the average rational person would be able to do a pound of impossible meat rather than a pound of beef. Um, and there's it, there's a lot more points that we could go on to, but I don't want to drone on and on. So uh, I will I will close to let Kiro finish what he would like to see. Okay. So uh, in closing, the prompt was, is veganism a moral imperative? Um, I'll just go down the list. So the first argument, I know my opponent didn't want to bring it up, um, but I will bring it up in favor of my argument, which is that veganism is not a moral imperative. Um, the vegan diet is no more healthy than um, a diet containing animal products. Um, we have the Mediterranean diet, for one example. We have the DASH diet um, as another example. And these are both diets that are deemed healthy by... Um, trying to remember off the top of my head what the institutions are. I believe it's the National Institutes for Health and the Harvard School of Public Health. Um, both say that those diets, the Mediterranean and the DASH diet, are healthful diets. Um, so that's one pig knocked down. Um, the second pig is the, oh, sorry, I'm going into my mic. The second pig is the environmental argument. Again, there's going to be some level of animal products that you can consume with basically the same impact on the environment as if we went vegan. So that's not a very convincing argument um, for why veganism should be a moral imperative. And the most convincing argument in my eyes is that are animals sentient? Um, the answer to that is we just can't know. Um, but my response to that is that they're different enough to justify some level of harm to them. Um, adjusted for how likely it is we think they're sentient. Um, and these are arbitrary lines that we're drawing. My opponent's line is arbitrary. My line is arbitrary. But most people, at least by action, already agree with my line because they already eat animal products. Um, that is my closing. All right. Thank you very much, debaters. Judges, go ahead and add the bonus points. And I'm going to call you in one by one to then give us your scoring we will then tally up the scores and we will figure out who is the winner of today's debate by the way anybody watching the video if you like this type of content you like what we do here there are plenty of ways to support us or come to twitch and participate in debate death matches yourselves or if you know somebody who would like to participate then go ahead and do that as well we're always open our discord is open all the fucking time and yeah, so judges, here we go. Okay, so the judges are here. We can hear them speak. They're about to grill me now for shilling the, the Discord. Watch them come in. Watch them. My God. Yeah, yeah. That. The fucking, the noises, man. The Don DeMarcos. Yeah, shit. yeah, we love I'm that. I'm so glad I have the fucking soundboard muted. We love that. Oh, we love the Don DeMarcos. I haven't heard a single right. thing the entire time. <laughs> I don't even know what Don DeMarco is. I already no, told you. <laughs> I already told you that you are not allowed to mute that shit. Everybody's going to have to hear it. Yeah. No. What do you mean no? There is no no here. I am the supreme no. authority. <laughs> what do you mean no? Yeah. No. You think this is a republic or a yeah, democracy? Yeah, exactly. This is an autocracy. <laughs> exactly. Bitch, okay? exactly. This is an autocratic dictatorship. I don't call him boss for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Right, go ahead, boys. Any of you ready to give us a score? Um, Zella, do you mind going first? Because I'm actually still tallying up my score and... Uh, summarizing the closing statements yeah. i have it in a doc okay right. we're gonna go share it to you, uh, we're gonna uh, go with I... yeah yeah yeah. It will send it to me in, my, in uh, dm oh. dm me it but apart from oh, that dm the whole oh boy yep yeah. yep um these things oh. are going to be listed on the some page i have to create at some point yeah, uh, Bubby Stella, is, Stella, go to Bubba, fucking Bubby is much more thorough than I am. Um, maybe not in like the judging side, but he <laughs> keeps track of what he gives the points for. That's fucking mental. I am AFKing <laughs> on RuneScape. Wow, I can... <laughs> wow best I mean, judges. I, I, mean, as, I mean, as long as you know that your rationale at the time was sound, then yeah. I guess it doesn't matter that much. So, 
Okay, start oh, it, start it, with it, vegan just to first. Clarify, start with vegan. vegan first. Okay. He, he got plus two in bonuses, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and Kuro got plus zero for bonuses. Yeah. If you're talking about bonuses okay. in the trivia and the questions, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Um, and then you add extra two bonus points at the end. Did you add those up? Yeah. You gave them to the person you think represented their overall position the best, correct? No, but I can. Um, yeah. Go ahead yeah, and add those right. bonus points up. That is the purpose of yep, them. Yep, I got it. Yep, okay, good. So, close. Very close. Very close. <laughs> Very close, yeah. Um, yeah, RuneScape was really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, AFK, dude. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. The final score I got was twenty-four to twenty. Twenty-four uh, to twenty in favor of Vegan, our resident in, Vegan. No. What do you mean no? In favor of Kuro. Okay, so you're doing it the wrong way around. <laughs> Wait, you just you just basically yeah, got right. his hopes up. Right. Jesus oh, Christ. Yes. I'm right. sorry. That is before. That is what, that is, that is brutal, Vegan. What did he just do to you? This is I'm so sorry, like Stella. Vegan. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll wait for Bubby to give us his score. Yes, I have tallied my score. Up. Okay. We're going for so Vegan first I'm... and then Koro. All right. I think this is going to be a close one. Yeah. Okay. So my score, and I'm sending you the doc right now, okay. is Vegan 11, Kuro 7. You're kidding uh -oh. me. No There's no fucking way you guys literally. Oh my god. It's a fucking <laughs> draw. Oh no. This is literally the only thing that's not possible to happen. Oh my god. Okay, so we're going to throw it over. Wait. We're going to ask you one more question. Judges are going to close. The tie huh? I'm the tiebreaker. Is I'm not the tiebreaker. I was a host. I said I will organize it. In other words, what I'm about to do now. So, I ju judge it for vegan. He wins. Okay, yeah, but if you, even if you judge it for vegan, that's not really helpful, guys. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask you one more question. And depending on the judge's arbitrary fucking conclusion of the question or how they want to judge it accordingly... And yeah, okay, so we're gonna ask one more question. So it all comes down to this, boys, all right? I know you don't like this, but it's the best that we can do for now, unless we're going to go with chat. I don't even know how many people Largus we have in chat. Point. Who? Largus has a point. Who's Largus? Vegan, what? Vegan was man enough to uh, use webcam. <laughs> Extra points for webcam. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point for webcam? Yeah, are we doing that? Yeah, sound reasonable? Okay, we'll throw it over. No, well, even no, if we no, give no, extra no. points for webcam, I think it'd still be the same, unless we're giving like five extra points. Okay, here's points. what we'll do. Here's what, yeah, we'll, here's what we'll do. Yeah, we'll, we'll let chat decide. We'll do a poll in chat, because that's the fairest okay. way to do it. And then, depending on who they vote, whether it's vegan or kuro, they will get one extra point, and then that will decide the victor. Okay, so we're going to throw it over to chat chat here you go make sure you vote it all comes down to this okay so here we go slash poll why do you sound british i am greek england you live in england oh i don't live yep. in england i live in russia fake news a lot so, so why do you have a british accent i don't have a Brit british accent Thank you very much. Why can't I fucking adjust the time? What is this bullshit? It says five minutes. Yo, that's way too long. All right. It is what it is. I'll go for a fucking <laughs> cigarette while we fucking chat votes. I won't even... I'm not going to vote. I feel like that'd be biased. No, you guys no, can't no, vote, no motherfuckers. Vote. None of you yeah, are voting. No, no judges, no I already debate. voted. Why? Yeah, yeah, I, voted. I assumed we could have. Oh, I... <laughs> yeah. Dude, I assumed we could. I mean, we because I, I, I know who I'd be you voting for. The, like, listen, I I know well, my voting rights. The problem with Stella, the problem with me. Stella is Stella was asking me the other time, hey, why can't I ask questions as the judge to the debaters? Anybody else see a problem me. with that? That wasn't me. Uh, 
Uh, I think you have me confused. No, that, that is definitely you. I will pull up you, the VOD you, right you now. You have a clip? Yeah, yeah. do it. No, we're not, we don't no, have time. No, honestly, because I, I'm pretty adamant that was not me. Okay, who was I it I think then? judges should be able to ask for clarification. if they. Don't oh, no shit. Sorry. sorry. My bad, my bad, Stella. Fake news. It was Xen. Yeah, true. Also, if the, uh, if the debaters are interested in seeing my rationale, I'm posting it in the side chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is this the side chat? Yeah, 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 yeah post it into... Okay, yeah, just oh in the God. side chat. Yeah, it's fine. Oh my God, the way Discord, like, translates it over from Doc is terrible. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah that is, dude, that's hard to read. That's, <laughs> that's hard to read. What the fuck is that? How do I send it to weird. people not that uh, much? Save it as a PDF. Or, uh, like a oh, word document. Sure what the, the fuck? Genius. That's genius, that's genius. I gotta save it as a PDF, you're right. Or just a word document. Uh... <laughs> Jesus, unhinged, unhinged. That is kind of crazy. So, your trivia questions actually got you a plus four in total. Wait, plus Wait, four? Wait, what? I, I did two. No, it's supposed to be two, yeah. That was a four. From each judge. Oh, from, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Wait. Wait, huh? What? Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Because uh, each judge, so I actually lose two points. Because there are two trivia questions. And then each no, judge... no, 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 that, that, no. That's not done? how we do it. What has um, he done now? No. They, <laughs> it doesn't change anything. I mean, if you're going to take trivia away, you can take it away. Like in total. Okay, so there were only two. We there were only two trivia questions, mm -hmm. and both of them, vegan answered correctly. Yep. So I put plus one, plus one. For to vegan, yeah, that's what I did too. So did Bubba. Okay, 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 okay. I get what he's saying. Okay, so yeah. All right. yep. yes. uh, I just set the I just set the document to public, and I'm just posting the link to the document. Okay. Yeah, that'll be easier to read than whatever the shit Discord wanted to do. The guy yeah, named Vegan was I mean... the vegan. That is correct. No, Vegan was the vegan. <laughs> Wait, wasn't Kuro the vegan? <laughs> These guys are lost. <laughs> These guys are lost. Yeah. No. The vegan yeah. just arbitrarily is the one who's not vegan. Sounds like something we would yeah. do here. Right, has everybody voted? We do we already have the votes already in? Okay, let's give them let's give them the full time. Let's give them the full time. I mean, my faith so... rating, I'm assuming we're still doing faith ratings. My faith rating for this was divinely good faith discussion. Both participants will ascend to debate heaven after this. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I actually gave a plus three um, to both players, uh, debaters, because, I mean. What do you mean? What do you mean? What, are you just arbitrarily it, giving it would... them points? No, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Let me explain. So the way I look at good faith is I try to, like, rate it. Like, I start them all off with plus three if they start showing, like, oh, not yeah, so yeah, good faith, sense. but not necessarily bad faith. That might knock them down to a plus two. And I, and, I, and I do a deductive way. And because I saw no deductions, because I saw no even hints at bad faith, they both got a plus three. Yeah. I'm I looking love the part in... where Kuro at some point becomes so good faith in the argument that he actually starts steel manning vegan arguments. <laughs> <laughs> talking about how veganism, <laughs> the world will eventually shift towards veganism. Uh, <laughs> just that's how good, that's a good faith argument. Yeah. Yeah. Kuro is definitely one of the goodest faith yeah. uh, non vegans I've had the pleasure of interacting with. Yeah, I. I, I I'm not a Zen. Yeah, so that was no, definitely a fresh hella, that was a, hella not a, a Zen. Fresh air. I wasn't expecting Kuro to do that well. I think he did phenomenally. Obviously, uh, veganist yeah, goes really without well. without saying. Obviously, he's a vegan. He's like, oh, yeah, he's all of that eating broccoli and shit stuff. But, I mean, he is a vegan, so he knows his shit. Like, that's what his life is about. Kuro, on the other hand, like, I don't even know why he knows the shit that he does, but, yeah. I think... Uh... To cope, because I obviously we gotta subtract two points off my score. Vegan, oh, no. you no. are the winner of today's debate. The chat has voted. I'm, I'm, I'm not because it was we, really close. Well, wow, sixty forty basically. You are. It is thirty two thirty one two by unanimous decision. You are the winner. Oh, I'm I'm saying the the the. the the double, was a unanimous decision. Double what? The double trivia. No, we already factored that in. You are the you winner. Know, you, the, you are the means... winner. You are the winner. 
I'm I'm too good faith. Let's explain how that works. So no, uh, you are the winner. There there is no no there misunderstanding here. Stella confused the shit out of you. <laughs> we understand Do what happened. Do you know happened. what unanimous means? Yeah. yeah. Two to one. Okay, so means. two judges, one being chat and one being fucking it's a split Stella. Decision, yeah. Oh, sorry. Split decision. Never mind. Yeah, by split decision. Yeah, unanimous means yeah but like that's not what agrees. confused him. He's still confused, you see? He, st he still thinks yeah. that he lost. No, <laughs> you're, you're the winner of the bonus questions, and you're also the winner of the debate. You're the winner of the I'm debate. The, the end. Impact of the trivia, though. Winner, winner. We have a winner. Congratulations, oh. Vegan. You still have not like conceptualize that you are the winner for some reason. He won. He can conceptualize okay. the most metaphysical vegan arguments, but <laughs> yeah, he thinks that he like, do I deserve to? Uh, am I a good person at, at, at this point in life? Yeah, that's so what... now, you, if you don't become vegan, you're all pieces yes, of shit. Yes, there you go, guys. Just know you have yes, no morals. Yes, exactly. End result: in hell. veganism is superior. Let us all understand that and move on in life, okay? Veganism is a moral imperative. Thank you, everybody, everybody for competing and participating. Congratulations. Fucked a lot of you. Thank you, debaters. Thank you, judges. Please let me know what your concerns are, vegan. I see you're worried. What are you skeptical about? I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my cope in. At the end, I'm going I'm to start with what I think, and then I'm going to throw my cope at the end, and then Kuro can say what he wishes to say. Okay. Um, the trivia is what made me win. The the cheat extra point uh, is what then allowed this vote to happen. No, it's not necessarily, oh. but yeah, I mean. Um, but I'm going to talk to you in a bit, boss, about that, because I think I have a better idea. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then my cope would be, because every other debate that you've had, you would always try to have, of the of the topic of debate you'd have one person against one person for and one person neutral i think the only people that could be judges that are for the topic again this is me coping uh the only people that could be a judge for veganism would be that they are vegan themselves and then i i presume bubby and zella are not vegan no, themselves. this is the, po the hey. this is literally the opposite no. of coping this is no, literally the opposite of no, coping. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying without trivia kuro won and my cope would be that um, my the whole because neither judge were vegan. They're technically both not vegan, not vegan okay. like against the ideal of being forced to be vegan, correct, morally imperative. Correct, uh, but and that's my cult. That's, well, but, but, well, but that's not what I was judging either. That's not what I'm judging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he yeah, does have a say, point. An important yeah, factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think an important factor to consider, at least for me as a judge, and this goes with all the things that I'll judge in the future. So. If if this isn't the best way to judge, then do let me know. I'm always judging on who I think represented their side of the argument better. Yep. I'm not my uh, my uh, you know my um endorsement of vegans' argument or my saying that vegan won this argument isn't necessarily me saying that I now completely subscribe to all the argumentation or the premise. It's just saying that I think vegan uh represented his argument better. Yes, yes, that's what debate death match is about. So there's no cope involved with this. You don't need to look at the fact that you are won by one vote, essentially by fucking trivia. Like that vote could also have come from anywhere. On my scorecard. I was going to say, technically on my scorecard too, even if you hadn't won the trivia, you still would have barely won. Okay, yeah. well, there you go. So essentially, this could come down to, even if you take trivia out of the matter, you still gained all of those points regardless. So I don't know why you need to do this now. Just take the W and wear it on your chest. And I think Kora will congratulate you on your victory. I think this was a very close match. I think both of you performed per, uh, phenomenally. Um, obviously, vegans more experienced and knowledgeable about this, like just simply because it's his lifestyle. Koro did perform absolutely unbelievably yeah, in my right. eyes. Yeah. And the judges, I think, did a pretty good service at representing the score. Yes, it was a very close fight. So, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, I do have uh, I do have uh, something to say, I guess. Yeah, go for it, man. Technically... Rigged? I mean, it... <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, 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 it's, it's not rigged. Technically... <laughs> I mean, tech, it's not a lie, but, I mean, it wasn't disclosed. Well, I guess I'll disclose it now. I am actually, in fact, vegan myself. 
Okay. Whoa! Hey. Wait, what hey. the oh, fuck? Yeah. Hey, I went for veganism. Motherfucker! <laughs> I convinced him to go vegan, guys. What <laughs> the fuck? fuck? <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I did expect that. I, Wait, I really? Yeah, you could tell. Yeah, yeah I, I was I was worried you could tell. It was I was, it was too knowledgeable, but I didn't I didn't want to assume anything. Yeah, yeah thinking, he knew uh, way too much. Like I, I, I was, was gonna th- say, yeah. I was thinking in my head, like he knew all the metaphysical yes. arguments so well. I was like, there's the, he either has thought about this a lot, and, like a he's lot. Yeah. Before, what was this thing or... about the name? The what was it? Name the name the trait. Name the trait. As the, soon that, as he said that shit, yeah. I was like, this guy is on another level. Why does he know that yeah. this much? I mean, yeah. The fact that I was like, do you know name of traits? Yeah, I'm like okay, immediately. Well, you know, yeah, I'm like yeah. okay, yeah. There's, there's no, he's not actually. Wow. Name that trait is literally like. That's but like I'm gonna the... keep going. Wow, the fucking yeah. dark horse. This motherfucker kept his mind ma- the entire time. I had no fucking idea. Jesus, congratulations, Debate man. Death match directed by M Night Shyamalan. Well, technically, yeah. you know, win for you is a win for us. Yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, true. Even if you try to go against it, steel man the opposition. You you still hey, lost. veganism is too strong. Yeah, guys. veganism. You always win wrong. when you it's play both strong, sides. Guys. Damn. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, hang on, Kuro. Did you like my? Uh, that's why I want the uh, the rational human route rather than uh, you know the standard argument that like if you're to watch Stop the vote. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't I don't like the rational human route just because no? Um, no. one could okay. I think convincingly argue that like okay well. I mean, if we're going to say most people are rational, most people are not vegan, and then that might, depending on who's judging the, the debate, that might that might be a big flip. Uh, well, no wonder the fucking side. meat eater sucks. He's a fucking vegan. What I, the it's, fuck? It's, the reason, <laughs> the reason the I vegans are friends. uniting. Yeah. <laughs> this whole debate big. was a psyop. It's a psyop. Yeah. <laughs> it's a psyop by big vegan. Holy yeah, big shit. Vegans. They pulled I the wild cargoes on us. I, I went rational person is because I'm sure the majority of the people here would consider themselves rational people. And if we were to go to those extreme arguments that you and I both brought up of, oh, you know, a rational person would watch another person kick their own dog and they would be like, okay, you're clearly there's something wrong with you. That's wrong. Yeah. Or the way we treat animals on factory farms, a rational person would view that as being wrong. I think majority of the stream if not all of the people watching the stream would all say you know what i agree with that i think i'd be a rational person i would say that's wrong so i yeah i was arguing against you i definitely was sus that you were vegan because you were too knowledgeable the arguments and i started (laughs) to focus more on the chat like i was talking to you because it was me and you talking to each other but i'm like all right i'm gonna start rational people we're talking i'm gonna start talking to chat about everything yeah you know what i didn't like about your argument kuro Man, whenever he was hitting you with like the baby questions, like, well, the baby doesn't know physics. Well, the baby doesn't have like uh, a perception or uh, of of a subjective reality. Yeah, yeah this is but they fucking did. will. But they will in like a year. <laughs> they're trying to get you us know, to like, eat That's bugs. all you had to say. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're human, and they will in a year. They'll be able to do these things yeah. and have the capacity. Yeah, to do but these then things. it becomes like the question of like potential sentience, right? Like, if you could potentially teach a monkey to like do okay. physics, like, do do they now breach that threshold? This is why I think the name that trade argument is like the nuclear option of vegan arguments. It's like, <laughs> you know, it just becomes so like heady and meta- metaphysical that it's almost impossible yeah. to answer. Damn. And I think the reason yeah. with that in mind, because Kuro knew name that trait. Yeah, it was like um, dead giveaway. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't nuke him. The fact that he was like, yeah, I know what name the trait is. Like, well, shit, now I can't absolutely. That was your secret weapon, was it? That was your secret weapon. Yeah, if, yeah. If I were yeah, to name that's that trait, how you get people his, wow. his name because, because he was able to subvert it a substantial amount. Um, I think that's why it was much closer. Like if I were talking to somebody who didn't know that argument or was not vegan, uh, yeah. I can I see why you like, saved it. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I, he, I think Kuro knows how to argue for the non-vegan standpoint just because he knows all the arguments. So yeah, that's, if he can still have the opposition, that's, that's like another level. Yeah. Like he doesn't just know yeah. the vegan arguments; he knows the opposition's argument, which means that he's contemplated this shit, looked into it, and f- like specifically, Ready. intentionally tried to figure out what are the holes in my logic, which is fucking respectable, bro. You have my uh, respect. I, guess, you know, Thanks, man. I, I like I like Kuro even more now that it's confirmed he's vegan. 
Ja. Ja. 